TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D. Wood. And it's good. It's good that I'm here because we got a philosophical topic yes. for everyone here. We're going to be going through the discussion between uh, Ben Shapiro and Cosmic Skeptic. And yes. uh, yeah, what do you think about Cosmic Skeptic, AP? First off, I would like to uh, correct you here. Um, his name is not Cosmic Skeptic anymore. That used to be his name. He is now known as Alex O'Connor. He now uses his regular name. Is that so. official? Like his his channel is not Cosmic Skeptic? Hang on, I'm looking. At yeah, that. he he actually changed his channel name, uh, the channel's name to Cos to Al to Alex O'Connor from Cosmic Skeptic. Why is that? Just because it sounds more grown up. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's not a not, not a child like me anymore. He's actually using a proper name now. Yeah. Okay, so the name on his channel, yes, is Alex O'Connor, but it's still at Cosmic Skeptic. So he can't, he can't, you oh, can't yeah. get away from the past, ladies and gentlemen. You can't get away from the past. But you can yeah, try, but a, you can't run. Yeah. Imagine yeah. that! Imagine that power move of just not going by some ridiculous name like. <laughs> Hi, this is the apostate prophet. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, but uh, Alex O'Connor, um, I said it before. Uh, I, I said it to you. Uh, both of these people, Ben Shapiro and Alex, but, but yeah, Alex O'Connor, he is definitely one of the one of the very few people that I that I feel like I genuinely respect the guy a lot. I think he's very intelligent, uh, very very um, very well spoken, very knowledgeable, very well educated, and has a very good character can just get along with anyone and to me he is like um when i look at the online you know atheist uh circles and spheres he, he is the one guy that stands out it's like i don't know so you're saying you're saying he's the ali dawa of atheism <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> 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 no, and uh, I didn't finish this. I started. Uh, I started watching it, and I realized it's. Uh, there's. There's only a few sections to this discussion, so we're just going to go with the first one, which is like uh, around twenty minutes long or something like that. But they're discussing uh, the issue of free will and so on. But yeah, it was. Once you've had discussions with the Dawa guys, sort of any normal discussion with anyone else is like shocking. Like, whoa, these guys are really disagreeing, and they're like cordial. Like, what is that? <laughs> Strange. Weird. <laughs> it is pretty, pretty weird. Um, all right. So, and what are your thoughts on Ben Shapiro? I know you don't like uh, him because he's not an atheist. I hate Ben Shapiro. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, this, is, this is a perfect exchange because Ben Shapiro, uh, my thoughts on him are, are quite similar. I think he's extremely intelligent, very knowledgeable, uh, great speaker. And, and and these two people are like fundamentally disagree with each other on on pretty much mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. and I disagree with a lot of stuff fundamentally with uh, with with Ben Shapiro, but I I love the guy. I have much respect for him, and um, yeah. So both and, of these people, it's it's very great to see that they come together and have an exchange. And it's just so interesting because um, I used to I used to teach the free will problem in philosophy of human nature, and so I bet you know that's. That's like, I don't know, eight or nine years ago or something like that. But um, unless things have really changed since then, these guys actually give pretty much exactly what uh, what any philosopher who's defending that position would give. If, if, you know, if, if if you're laying it out for a at a philosophy conference or something like that or teaching it, you'd be generally more careful laying out each premise and then defending each premise and so on. But the positions that they actually get and the problems they're pointing out with the opposing position are that's pretty much where it is. That's where the debate stands. And yeah. uh, I, I find this the whole free will debate, I find really interesting because it's a it's a situation where you got like you got three main you got three main views and then there's a couple like weird like hybrids. But um, you got three main views. And each one of them has a pretty darn good case for why it's the correct position. And each one has a pretty significant problem with it. And yet it seems like one of them has to be has to be correct and the others have to be wrong. Um, so we are uh, we're going to go through some of this. All right. So you heard it here, folks. We've got 
Ah, I keep wanting to call him Cosmic Skeptic. Alex. <laughs> Alex and Ben. Alex and Ben. So Ben Shapiro, uh, Orthodox Jew, Cosmic Skeptic, Orthodox Atheist. What are you <laughs> rubbing your eyes for? I, people are saying, I'm, uh, it, it just started, my, my eyes just started burning. I think it's very dry in here, so... Uh. Uh, Get yeah. some eye drops, man. I'm, I might have to get up and get some eye drops and come. You ever heard of Visine? I actually have some. I'm hey, go grab some Visine real quick. I'll take these. Uh, there's the first couple okay, of okay, chats real okay, quick. I'll do that. I'll do get that. some Visine. I'll do that. Yeah, guys. See, now that AP's gone, we don't want him to miss even a second of this exchange because he's going to be humiliated when he sees his hero, Cosmic Skeptic, not Alex O'Connor, get crushed and humiliated. Uh, let's see here. Art Gaines. No, it's actually, it's actually a good friendly discussion that we're about to watch, but they do get to the heart of the issue. Uh, Art Gaines. Can't wait to hear what the spawn of Trotsky's leather strapped orifice has to say. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> uh, Uthman's tomato ketchup. Says, seen there once was a prophet called Mo who ruled by the spear and the bow. His book full of error, he resorted to terror and promised a paradise. <laughs> promised a paradise. Oh, what's wrong with you guys? Um, <laughs> hey, someone clicked on a a member. Hey, guys, th those of you who uh, were signing up the other day, I mentioned I mentioned that um, I was releasing a video on Friday. I ended up expanding that video, and so that. Unless something really, really weird happens, uh, that will you'll have access to that tomorrow for you those of you who are channel members. Everyone else will you could you could catch it the next day. But um, yes, actually, my f second favorite argument, and we've I've never really emphasized it a ton. Um, so my favorite argument dealing with Islam is what we call the Islamic dilemma. The Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, and yet contradicts the Jewish and Christian scriptures on fundamental doctrines. And so Islam just self-destructs because there are two possibilities. Either we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, or we don't. If we have the, if Christians have the word of God, Islam is false because it contradicts what we have. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false because it affirms what we have. So either way, Islam's got a problem. Uh, we've emphasized that a lot over the years. I've only emphasized a couple of times this related problem. It's a completely different problem, but it's kind of connected. And that is that, and, and again, you'll see this video tomorrow uh, or, the, or the next day, but there's this related problem. If you look at what the Quran says, why does the Quran affirm all these other scriptures? Why does it affirm all these other scriptures? Because the actual position of the Quran is that Allah sent a revelation to every people of every language. And why is, why is, why is Muhammad supposedly the last prophet? Because he's just the, the Arabs were the last people to get their prophet. So every other group in the entire world had their messenger. They had their revelation. And that's what they're responsible for. And the last people who got their revelation were the Arabs. And that's why the Quran is in Arabic. And the Quran says it over and over and over again, that the reason the Quran is in Arabic is to warn the Arabs because the Arabs didn't have their own warner. And it says over and over and over again that the Arabs needed a book in their own language so that they could understand it. And the impression you get is you're not responsible for a revelation in another language. And why is that so interesting? Why is that such a huge problem? Every, pretty much every Muslim, every Dawah guy will tell you that you, even if you're an English speaker, a German speaker, a Spanish speaker, whatever you are, whatever your native language is, you now have to go by the Quran written in a different language. When what the Quran says is that it was revealed in Arabic specifically so that Arabs had a, had a book that they could understand in their own language. And yet every, every Muslim today tells us that we all have to judge by this book in a different language when it's the exact opposite of why Allah says he revealed the Quran. So anyway, I've always, I've always loved this point because it's another area. It's another issue where the Dawah guys are saying the exact opposite of what their God says. It's, it's just like when they say, according to the Quran, the Bible's corrupted. It's the exact opposite of what their God says. And they just go with it. And then their followers listen to the Dawah guys, not what Allah says. Anyway, um, so I was, uh, I've made that point in a video 
before uh, I was making a revised and expanded case, and then I just kept expanding it. So uh, it's significantly longer. You got some eye drops, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that we are live, so I just went to take a nap. Well, you yeah. know, you didn't actually need to go get eye drops because as soon as you start watching this, you're going to be crying. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, uh, I left Thanks. this up here. I didn't go to the uh, another couple super chats because uh, I wanted you to see this awesome poem. There once was a prophet called Mo who ruled by the spear and the bow. His book full of error, he resorted to terror and promised a paradise hoe. <laughs> <laughs> nice very nice uh here we go d wood boldly uses his own name christian ap cowardly hides behind incoherent pseudonym atheist <laughs> draw your own conclusion incoherent <laughs> uh, nice. let's see prophecy it depends on what the religion believes what's this about Imam Arafat and Sheikh Dabudi bin Hijab <laughs> prophecy. It depends on what the religion believes. Uh, knows too much. Find a pen pal. Mo, breastfeed an adult. JP, how about no? I don't buy your milk. <laughs> Mo, what about camel urine? Hey, what do we have here? Uh, we have, uh, we got Cameron here. He says, Alex will probably be a Christian one day. Same as AP. AP, accept your fate. Be a man. <laughs> Stop being a pathetic man. weakling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, let, probably, most likely. Yeah. Let's see. Definitely. Dr. D, maybe you and Ahmed from Ahmed X Muslim could do a two on one with AP, trying to help him understand God and salvation, kind of like Sheikh Uthman and his wife and Uthman, wife, other husband. Lol. Hey, I don't, I, I'm not teaming up with someone I don't know. But what the is same your... guy always pushing Ahmed X Muslim? And yeah, I, I still don't canceled. Know. Are you actually Ahmed X Muslim? Huh? I bet he is. I bet so. I bet. And yeah. let's see. Knows too much. You read my mind. Gold. Oh, Mojab. Muhammad Camels. Mojab. Golden showers. Muhammad, you read my mind from Camels. Yes, Ali Dawa. We're proud of that. <laughs> and. Opinion, Sheikh Uthman rising up another man's wife. Yeah, it definitely sounds like that happened. It's a weird situation where everyone involved is a liar, but Uthman seems to be the biggest liar. I just, I'm, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not involved enough to to figure out if it's if it's true or not, and what is true and what is not. That's uh, the thing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. It's like, hey, uh, you know, I don't know enough of the details, but. Yeah, on a live stream the other day, uh, Mary, who was on here previously with us, and Thaddeus actually did all the investigating and went through all the uh, old, you know, comments and stuff like this and all the videos on the issue and stuff like that. And it looks like a pretty solid case for uh, their disputes about whether the whether they were married just because the woman keeps changing her story. But yeah, she has repeatedly said they were married. He's repeatedly said they were married. Uh, there's disputes about what the status of the divorce was and so on, but does not look good for Sheikh Uthman. With that said, I don't really care, except that this is an ongoing problem with these Dawa guys. Have you noticed this? I did. I did. Um, there is often a problem with these people. Uh, that said, I don't know. I leave it to everybody else to do yeah, the I'm stuff not, I'm... here and to and to do whatever they want with it. Uh, I personally will just watch from the silence. I will not get involved. Yeah, I'm really not interested. Apart from saying "told you so," you don't realize yeah, it. Yeah, you don't realize yeah. that what these guys uh, are. These guys who I mean. So again, we pointed out before. You've got people like Sajid and even like Fareed. They seem sincere. They seem to really believe this stuff. Other guys seem like they use it to their own advantage. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys you need to watch out for because if they're using this for their own advantage, they're going to take they're going to take uh, every advantage they can. Inshallah. And so hide your wife. Alhamdulillah. Hide your wife, everyone. If Sheikh Uthman is around, uh, let's see. What are you laughing at? Just what you just said. <laughs> Look at this. Lars says, get a pimp pal, y'all. 
<laughs> Pimp. Hey, yeah, that sounds actually that sounds good. That yeah. that could be a that could be a Andrew Tate's new app, the Pimp Pal. <laughs> like, hey, what do I do? Oh no, the girl's catching on to me. Well, here's what you do, and you just got an app. He could totally make something like that. He These could. fans would love it. He could. Uh, let's see. Lol, no, I just think he's really knowledgeable, and I want to encourage the regulars in the chat here to consider showing Ahmed some love. Well, you definitely get his name brought up in every single live stream. Stop pretending. We know it's you. Yeah, yeah. Ah, man. <laughs> Brickhouse said, when's Shake Your Booty going to meet the European Shake What Yam Amagavaya? What is that? Is that another character? What Yam Amagavaya? I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't what get it either. Amagavia. Hey, what's that about, guys? Is that a character? Or is that a name you just made up and we're we're misreading it? And we don't get that. Probably, probably, probably. All right, one more, and then we're uh, jumping into up. this. Jumping into this video, watching your uh, your hero, cosmic skeptic. Okay, Alex, cosmic get crushed, shit. crushed, and humiliated. Uh, hey, Dizzle and AP, I'm a baby Christian, and I want to make videos about faith, etc. Why you want to make? Why you want to jump into videos when you're brand new, man? You're a baby. What are you doing here? Like... Do you think it's best to spend more time studying first? Because I don't. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get a get a get a general a general grounding, and then figure out what issue you're most interested in, and study that a lot, and then talk about that thing that you've studied. Otherwise, you'll just I would, what? I would say grow up first. You probably have more important things to do growing up. Uh, develop, and then you can you can do that. AP saying that because you uh, you acknowledge that you are in fact a baby. So we're we're I mean although I have to say we're impressed that you even know how to use a computer. Uh, I know that's. Crazy, crazy. But yeah, study first. Don't don't jump right into stuff. All right. Are you ready to jump into this AP? I need to study first. Uh, yes, so, yes, I am. All right. Yes. So Ben Shapiro. So I cut off the little intros at the beginning and I jump right into where they're talking about uh, the first issue. Let's go ahead and see what they got. Um, sure. But let's talk about something that, Ben, you have um, spoken on and, Alex, you have responded to. This idea of the atheist delusion. Ben, could you sort of concisely, if you can, um, talk about what you mean by the atheist delusion? Sure. Uh, okay, I got it. How dare people, you say atheist delusion? People, people okay. explained it. People explained it. When's Sheikh Yabudi going to meet the European Sheikh what your mama gave you? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yes. What are we, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I when, sometimes when you are live, it takes uh, it is it harder does. To I'm always out. like that. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was like that when I was teaching classes. It's like a different part of your brain is is activated, and like I would yeah, be yeah. like, I I have trouble spelling on the board. If yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so we got it. Shake what your mama gave you. We might want to spell it differently. Yeah, <laughs> but that could be a character. All right. Now, before I was rudely interrupted by jokes, jokes. Let me back this. Thing up <laughs> is this a joke you think this is a joke i said let me back this thing up <laughs> get it because <laughs> it was shake what your mama gave you and i said let me yes, back this yes. thing up wow i didn't even intend that it just it just came out all right here we go um but let's talk about something that ben you have um spoken on and alex you have responded to this idea mm -hmm. of the atheist delusion ben could you sort of consider that hurt your feelings, AP? He said atheist yeah. delusion. I know, it's it's very bigoted. Do all the old light bulbs in this room help? I don't know. Nicely, if you can, um, talk about what you mean by the atheist delusion. Sure, so I should start off by saying I don't actually think that it's possible to prove the existence of God. I'm also Wrong. not a believer that you can disprove the existence of God. I don't think that logical argumentation is going to get you there one way or another, and so I'm not going to try and do that with, with oh, Alex today because I think that if people would have been able to provide dispositive proofs, then people would believe them. And if people were able to provide dispositive proofs that God does not exist, then people would be more apt to believe those as well. The, what I think is a, an atheist delusion is that it is possible to live ideologically purely in a way that does not rely on fundamental faith principles. When I say faith principles, I'm not going to make the claim that those faith principles are direct from Sinai or that those faith principles require the New Testament, for example. I'm going to make the claim that there are a bunch of principles upon which we base ourselves that are external to what we know about nature and evolutionary biology, and that many of the things that 
Alex does in his daily life, for example, are going to be things that rely on principles that are external to a philosophy that would assume a lack of the supernatural, a lack of the the extra natural. Um, so some of those principles, for example. Uh, let me back up just so everyone understands this. I want to back up to where he said, where he's explaining what the what he's calling the atheist delusion. So sounded like he's saying it's an atheist delusion thinking that you can live, well, not just like exist, live, but, you know, live and, and think and reason and so on uh, without kind of borrowing some tools that shouldn't be available on your worldview. Something along those lines. Let's let him repeat it again, because I mean, there are there are. Uh, yeah, there are there are apologists who use uh, this sort of thing. I just don't want to misinterpret what he's saying. That sounds like big like sophistry to me, but um, yeah, it's just me. Oh, really? Because you're about to get crushed. <laughs> think is a, an atheist delusion is that it is possible to live ideologically purely in a way that does not rely purely. on fundamental faith principles. When I say faith principles. I'm not going to make the claim. So it, it looks like what he's going to say, and we'll let him we'll let him uh, repeat it again. But um, right after this, they jump into the free will debate. So it seems like that's an example of what he's talking about here. Is that if we take Alex's worldview to its conclusion, we are not actually uh, we we don't have free will, we don't have moral responsibility. But we have to live like we do, and therefore, it's like you can't live coherently with what you're claiming. So you can apologize now, AP, for your worldview. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if people were able to provide just positive proofs that God does so not exist, this. I then people this. would be more apt to believe those as well. The what I think is a an atheist delusion is that it is possible to live ideologically purely in a way that does not rely on fundamental faith principles. When I say faith principles, I'm not going to make the claim. Oh, okay. I get it now. Because I was thinking purely, I was thinking like morally purely. And I was like, what, what does that have to do with what he's talking about? But I think he means if this is your ideology, you cannot stick to it purely and live as an atheist. It's a delusion. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's saying. You cannot actually adhere and live according to your what you say is your worldview. I think that's what he's getting at. So, he says without um, faith principles, I'm really wondering which faith principles he's talking about. here. And yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That those faith principles are direct from Sinai or that those faith principles require the New Testament, for example. I'm going to make the claim that there are a bunch of principles upon which we base ourselves that are external to what we know about nature and evolutionary biology. And that many of the things that Alex does in his daily life, for example, are going to be things that rely on principles that are external to a philosophy that would assume a lack of the supernatural, a lack of the the extra natural. Um, so some of those principles, for example, are free will. So every day we get up, we believe, virtually all of us, whether we whether we say we believe it or not, we actually act in ways that that betray the idea that what's up with what's up with uh, Alex there grinning <laughs> Hang on. I just backed up a couple seconds but watch his face whether we say we believe okay. what's up okay go, go ahead go ahead uh, or not we actually act in ways that that betray <laughs> the idea that we believe that we have control over our own actions at least to a certain extent and that that control makes a difference in the world and that's what gives us purpose it's what allows us to wake up in the morning and and make the decision to do what we believe is right or what we believe is wrong that the principles of right and wrong are external to evolutionary biology so both of these principles that i've mentioned already free will right and wrong these come from a language that is external to the the darwinian language of evolutionary biology if you're talking about free will there is nothing in nature that suggests the ability to make a decision free of environment and genetics in combination in some sort. The same thing is true of right and wrong. The idea that there is a right and there is a moral wrong that we can reason our way to. Another principle that I think that you're obviously very big on. It's something that you rely on all the time, your entire podcast. So the, the thing is, um, I, I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest, because I think uh, the approach is, 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 is very weak. And it's one that I just heard so many times from random, regular people.
If you still and, don't get the point, then that's why we got to keep saying it over and over again because you don't get it. All right, but go ahead. <laughs> and, 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 and the point is a very basic and a very simple one, um, which I believe and I'm sure Alex will um, swiftly respond to in, a, in, a, in quite a decisive way. But he's basically, he's basically trying to argue here that naturalism or, you know, um, just going with the with with what is there available in the physical world um, will lead us to this, um, you know, into a position where we are left living according to something, but not basing, but not being able to base that something which we live by on something permanent or something fundamental, something completely secure, like God or like uh, a, a natural um, law and order of things a scripture. So we rely on our on our rationality, on our thoughts, on our thinking. And he thinks that is um, weak or dangerous or whatever conclusion he will then draw from this. But I think, I mean, I, I just, I just, just looking at the responses that will be given to that and that I have on my mind, I think that's a very weak position. But uh, let's see where this goes. Yeah, I think it's a bit stronger than you, and th they're they're going to flesh this out a bit. But it, th when he's talking about the free will problem, he's basically pointing out we live and think as if we have free will, as if mm -hmm. we we have the kind of free will that makes us morally responsible agents. But if we go with your worldview, you're right. They're talking. He seems to be talking about like a naturalist view or materialist, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if we go with that, then you're not free. Like every everything yeah. you do is completely determined by particles in, that were in motion before you were even born. So it's all everything you're, everything you believe, everything you do is all determined, and therefore, when you live as if you're free. You're living as if as if you you don't actually believe in that worldview, and it, it sounds like what he meant by ideologically pure. You're not living an ideological uh, ideologically pure life. Here's my ideology, but I live as if something else is the case. Uh, here's the thing: I wanted I want to take back what I said what what I said about a week. But um, so the the issue here is you if see? he tries to <laughs> if he tries to say um, if he tries to argue that uh, therefore there must be something uh you know that or, or, or that our position that a naturalistic or materialistic or physicalist position would therefore be logical um i think that would be a, a weak argument a weak conclusion from from this but if he's just if he's using this to basically argue how problematic and how difficult the reality is once we you know confront ourselves with the fact that we uh, seemingly um you know uh, assume certain things that we cannot necessarily, um, you know, um, how do I say that? I mean, if, if he's just going to point out how problematic and how difficult it is to face the reality, then of course, yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a strong point. And yeah, I, I got the, uh, I got the, we'll I got that. the gist, I got the gist of what they're saying when I was getting the clip ready, but Kind of spoiler alert, Ben is pointing out, and I agree with him entirely, yeah, you got some problems. If everything's yeah. determined, it doesn't seem like we actually live like that or can actually function. I mean, we can function, you can function, but you just have to function as if you don't believe it. You just have, you still have to live as if you don't believe that. Alex is going to point out, actually, I don't think that, I don't think you... I think you got the same problem, even if you believe in a soul and the supernatural. He's going to point out, you, you kind of got the same kind of issue. And uh, so anyway, it's actually it's a, it seems like a pretty good discussion. But, but you see, but you see what I'm saying, right? So it, it, it's it's more uh, it's more about how difficult it actually is, how difficult that reality actually is, than about whether um, that reality is true or not, right? Yeah, they're going to go into this, and and by the way, that's a that's a that is a separate but relate very relevant question. Um, like, so there's there's one issue is this difficult is this hard to understand is this implausible can we live according to this and then two is it actually true okay right right uh and then there's the the related issue would be okay well if you can only function if you can only function like this if you can't actually function according to while believing that you are everything you do is determined if you cannot live consistently with that view 
how does that relate to whether it's true or not? Um, like, is that a reason to doubt that it's true? If I say I can't live according to this, is that a reason to think that it's not true? Anyway, that's let, my yeah, point. That's my yeah, point several, too. several issues exactly. here. A um, uh, couple more super chats real quick. Oh, I was reading the shake what your mama gave you. What do you got? Okay. So there, this was explaining what the, uh, what the earlier name <laughs> was. And then Paul, cause I, I glanced at Paul Jones and he just said, your mama. So I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go to war, Paul Jones? <laughs> Coming on here, talking about everyone's mamas. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So he's talking about the name guys. If you came in late, then yeah, this is referencing something earlier. Uh, David, you seem to have musical inclinations. No, apart from beatboxing, I have no musical inclinations. Uh, name some of your favorite artists or genres. AP as well, please. Because we'll have to keep this quick because someone's trying to derail our conversation. I like classic rock, old school rap. That's what I like. I like Leonard Cohen, uh, who's my, my, my favorite musical artist um, for many different reasons. Because he's, he's a Jew? <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> uh, I listen to lots of world folk music, but I also like um, some some rap that is very uh, conscious and intellectual, like Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, um, yeah. So I like Pink Floyd, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here we go. Morality mentioned. Ten minutes until AP defends Hitler. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> it, it is a matter of time, folks. It's a matter of time. Well, he was trying to do right. He was just trying to do the right thing. Uh, it's, it's like uh, I'm just being like, it's just uh, they're just egging it on. And at some point, I, st I just start doing it or just start saying it because I know that people will uh, react with a little bit of surprise to it. <laughs> Uh, Stenzo says, here's my European Jizyanic super shekels with greetings from Luxembourg. Is that still a country? I figured that little <laughs> tiny place would have been swallowed up by a bigger country at some point. Thanks for everything you do, guys. Love you both. AP, come to the family. Jesus gave himself as a ransom, even for a bad sinner like you. God bless. He's got a sure. point. I mean, we're just pointing out. I mean, this is a guy who defends Hitler. Anyway. Uh, oh, here's another one. Shake, rattle, and roll. The tricky part of the shake names is like coming up with a spelling that looks like it could actually be a name. To where people have to take a closer look at it. And... It's easy. All right. Back to Ben. So he focused on the free will issue. And let me just black up. Black up We're discussing a serious topic here. Stop talking about your mama. And stuff like yeah. What's wrong with you guys? Discussing, yeah. the, discussing one of the most difficult issues in philosophy. And you guys are talking about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> in some sort. The same thing is true of right and wrong. The idea that there is a right and there is a moral wrong that we can reason our way to. Another principle that I think that you're obviously very big on and something that you rely on all the time, your entire podcast, is, is based on the idea of reason. These ideas do not exist in the context of a purely materialist atheist universe. Now, I'm not going to make the claim that I can prove that it's God who's behind those things because one of the principles of faith belief is that I don't understand God. So for for people who don't believe in God, that's that's an easy way out, right? That's an easy way out for people like me because I say, well, I, I don't have to explain the relationship between God and free will because frankly, I don't fully understand God. But that's not really the, the that, that's not really a, an open window. That's just part of, of pretty much all faith systems is that if my mind were the mind of God, then I would either be God or God would not exist. One of the two things. So you get that correct me if, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, so in, um, there is not much um, in terms of Jewish um, apologetics in terms of, uh, you know, defending the, the validity or the, 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 the truthfulness of the, of the faith in God, right? So I, I'm not very familiar with it. I feel like I've never, I've, I haven't really come across something like that very much. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd be interested in that. We'd have to ask someone who like either an, an Orthodox Jew or a Messianic Jew who engages with, uh, um, you know, with Jewish rabbis, like Michael Brown, so on, he engages with Jewish rabbis and so on. Or, uh, yeah, we'd have to ask someone because, yeah, they're definitely not as, you know, just giving apologetics arguments like, I mean, if you think about it, it's basically Christians, Muslims, and atheists who are the mm -hmm. kind of the most aggressive with, hey, here's our arguments for, uh, for our positions. Um, 
And you know, it might not be it might not have been as essential in Judaism where, you know, you have a mm-hmm. very, you know, close knit uh ethnically connected community and so on. So yeah, uh, that's interesting though, but I hadn't I hadn't thought about that because yeah, he's uh Ben's raising the points, but they're the same points like a Christian, uh, mm-hmm. like a Christian would use. Or, I mean, what he's saying, I mean, a Muslim could even say some of what he's saying right there. Um, so, yeah, that would, his arguments right now, his position right now would be pretty theist friendly in general. Yeah. But yeah, we'd have to see. I'm thinking, yeah, that even the like Orthodox Jewish apologetics that I'm familiar with is normally a response to like Christians arguing that Jesus is the Messiah. So they have the responses arguing that Jesus isn't the Messiah, but that's not the same thing as just saying, here's why our position is, you know, our Judaism is correct and and from God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it might be an interesting little project and anyone who's more familiar about this, let us know. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. A couple more super chats real quick. Since AP derailed that. Uh, Real Mess Chris said, so weird listening to this conversation after Sife's amazing argumentation yesterday. Can't compare. I know, isn't it? That's what, that's what you interact with the Dawa guys so frequently that you just lose, you forget what it's like to have a normal, friendly conversation with someone you disagree with. And yet people can actually respect each other and not try, not, oh, you've been humiliated, humiliated. It, after the live stream, I, um, I, I I went to my wife and said, doesn't it feel like um, I feel like I was very, very uh, exceptionally goofy during this live stream? And she said, yes, that's because the way the guy speaks made everything really bizarre. <laughs> I don't know. It would be it would be funny if Cosmic Skeptic just started uh, talking like Sife Sife and Sife talk, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he did. Or or Ben Shapiro, either one. It would have been hilarious if those guys did it. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Look, these this guy must have. Hey, John must have come over from your channel, AP, because look what he said. I was led to believe that bend over and film a kraken were fully accepted in Islam. You see, <laughs> you see the people who follow you over from your unholy channel. Yeah, I see it. I see it, and I'm proud of that. We have Cosmic Surfer. Oh, nice. Shake, shake. Mm. Um, nice. <laughs> what is it, Paul? What, is all the, what are all these comments? Shake Wang, the Chinese Muslim. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? All right. This is a back serious, to our serious, serious topic, man. We're having a serious philosophical discussion when Ben Shapiro and Alex being totally cordial and friendly, having a serious discussion. And we're over here dealing with Shake Wang. That's what we got to deal with. <laughs> oh, the, the idea that reason makes a difference in our lives, that we can reason our way to propositions, and that that's more than just saying a few magic words and that's setting off a few neurons in somebody else's brain in a naturalistic way, that there actually is principles of truth, another concept that comes from the extra natural world, that these principles exist. So, so far I've mentioned free will, good, right and wrong, reason and truth, right? All things that we consider extremely key in our daily lives and that Alex considers key in, in what he does. It's, I assume, why you get up every morning or at least why you feel you get up every morning. You know, wh- what, what... Actually, I want to back that up because I want to... Back that up. Yeah, so he gives four examples. I think we're... I think this entire section that I clipped is on the free will, but he said what? He said free will he said reason he said truth and i think right and wrong and those are all those he's mm-hmm. saying those all fit pretty well in a theistic framework and not really well in a naturalist framework but i just want to make sure i got the four it's one of the two things issues so right the here. the idea that reason makes a difference in our lives that we can reason our way to propositions and that that's more than just saying a few magic words and that's setting off a few neurons in somebody else's brain in a that point is more important than he lets on there. That truth, like reason and truth has to be more than, you know, if your neurons firing in my brain and then I say something to you and then neurons fire and so on. Citation uh, needed. Yeah, and this uh, this got brought up in my recent debate with uh, Arun Ra. Uh, some people call it the argument from reason and there are variations of it. Uh, there's Alvin Planiga's 
um, more sophisticated version, the, the evolutionary argument against naturalism. Um, and there, it's basically, Plantinga's position is that if you developed in the way that you must have developed, if naturalism is true, then your cognitive faculty, so your reasoning ability, your memory, and these sorts of things, these developed not to get you to the truth about philosophy or cosmology or anything else. You got these faculties because they gave you a survival advantage. So they helped you survive and reproduce. And he argues that if that's how you got your cognitive faculties, you have no business trusting them with, you know, philosophical questions or cosmology or things like that. Um, and various people have made related points who aren't, in Pl so planning as a Christian, but Charles Darwin, Darwin said in response to a, a, a theist who sent him a book defending arguments for design and nature. So he said, look, look at all this evidence for design and nature. And Darwin replied, you have, you have summed up my view exactly. It does look like it's designed. He goes, but with me, the horrid doubt always arises whether I can trust my own convictions, which because the, the processes that develop my convictions are the same processes that led to you know the, the lower animals. And he said, would anyone trust in the convictions of a monkey's mind if there were any convictions in that, in that mind? So he's pointing out that yeah, it, the universe really looks like it's designed, but I don't know if I can trust my cognitive faculties to tell me that something like the universe is designed, given what I believe about how I how I got my cognitive faculties. It's the same the same process that, that gave a monkey its ability to figure things out, to learn a little bit, to learn. Oh, don't eat that. It's okay to eat this. The same. I'm just, yeah, I'm smarter, but it's a basic. It's basically the same idea, and that's not the sort of thing I can trust to tell me about you know, whether the universe is designed or something like that. Hume said something, Hume or much earlier said something similar, where he said, basically, the the further you get away from ordinary experience, our, our cognitive faculties work really well with ordinary human experience. The further you get away from that, the less reliable you can, uh, you can take your faculties to be. Um, that, that's pretty much what I what I, um, what I kind of gave as uh, major reasoning in one of the in, in, in a video that I made a long time ago where I explained why I don't believe in God because people kept asking me. And um, where one of my main points was that uh, throughout life, I believed so many things to be com absolutely true, which I later uh, realized or concluded were complete nonsense or not true. And uh, lots of people come to these convictions. Lots of people um, you know, think or look at these signs around them and uh, say, well, it's, it's so obvious, isn't it, that this is true. But I don't know, how, how, how can you trust yourself? How can you trust fellow humans with the weak minds that we have compared to, for example, a creator, if there is one? I don't know. Um, there's actually uh, some, some relevant comments here in these super chats. Check these out real quick. Uh, Josh says, you could be totally determined, caused to believe in a false set of facts and think that it's true, because if it's the case that everything is determined, you could never know it. That is an, that's an issue. And again, so Ben's going to point out that this, these kinds of things are a problem for naturalism. Uh, Alex is going to point out that, well, how do, how do you avoid having the exact same problem? If you believe that, you know, your soul or whatever is created by God, it, what, is it Precise. determined? Is that determined or not? So he's going to point out, hey, I don't think your supernaturalism gets you away from the problem. So we're going to we're going to check that Precise. out. But yes, you're, you're correct here in that. Notice if all of our beliefs and guys, this is these are the issues that everyone needs to to be thinking through. And so this is more of an issue for those of you who are naturalists or materialists or physicalists or something like that. You idiots. Uh, yeah. You guys have you, you guys have this problem and live with this problem and try to figure out how to navigate this problem. And then Alex is going to say, well, theists actually have the same problem. And so theists are then going to have to try and figure figure out what's going on here. But so notice the pro notice the issue. If all of my if all of my thoughts and beliefs are determined by straightforward physical processes, well, guess what? The same sorts of physical processes that produce a true belief also produce a false belief. 
And the true belief will be believed by the person and the false belief will be believed by a person. It's the, it's just straightforward particles in motion. Uh, what's going on there? And so you got this guy and he believes in Islam and he's just been determined by particles in motion to believe that. And this guy believes in Christianity. And this guy's an atheist over here. And they all believe what they're determined by physical processes to believe. And so, yeah, the question then becomes, how do you then take your belief seriously when whether it's true or false, it's the same sort of physical processes that produced it. In fact, you can, in philosophy, they make kind of more, they lay out the premises uh, more carefully. But basically, this is a, gosh, it's been a while. I think it's called the consequence argument. But it goes like this. And so if you wanted if you wanted an actual, like how a, how a philosopher would put the argument, and then philosophers would, would debate the issue. But uh, like Peter Van Inwagen's version is something like this. Um. I do not control the past, right? Like even, even when I was in the, right now, I do not control the past. I can't control what I did five minutes ago because it's in the past. I no longer have control of the past. Uh, so so I, I cannot control the past. That's one thing. Two, I can't control the laws of nature. I can't control the past. I can't control the laws of nature. Can't control the past. Can't control the laws of nature. But if determinism is true, then what I think and believe and whatever I do and so on right now is determined. It's causally determined by the past and the laws of nature. So what I do now is somehow not under my control because I don't control the, the past or the laws of nature. So my actions right now, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking right now is a consequence of two things that I do not control. And so the question is, well, is, is the fact that I think I'm in control of my actions, is that, is that an illusion? Is that an illusion? So and that's, that's the, issue. the question. That's the big question here. Yeah. So that's the issue. And again, Alex is going to Alex is going to flip the script. Uh, a couple more super chats, real quick, so so we don't get too far behind. Hello, Moses Maimonides is probably the best you will find in terms of Jewish apologetics. Ah, yeah, we've we've uh, we've seen Maimonides here. But does he do? Um... I guess I have to look into it, but does, you know, does, does he like theologically, uh, you know, de defend the truthfulness or the, or, you know, the existence of, of God? Does he? Oh, he says, he says, he, uh, he says he's probably the best you'll find in terms of Jewish apologetics. And even then that's more purely philosophical than apologetic. I see. I see. Yeah. Cause we're thinking of apologetics normally, like here's why Islam is true. It's because of the scientific miracles or, you know, if, if you're, if it's Christianity, Jesus rose from the dead, something like that. We're wondering what the go-to case would be because jews didn't have like historically very much um didn't have this problem or didn't bother um you know do, doing that or trying to convert or trying to argue with people who yeah it's not a very know. it's not very evangelistic yeah yeah, yeah. uh one Jewish apologetic claim i heard growing up is that sinai revelation must be true because it is the only retroactive claim of public revelation. The only retroactive claim of public revelation. Is that supposed to mean, um, I, I don't get it. The only claim that in the past public re re revelation that happens in front of lots of people took place. Yeah, you, you and yeah, you I, and me would both we would both react to that the same way. Even though you know I'm a Christian and I believe in revelation and so on, it would be like, okay, well, what's your case that that actually happened? Right. Exactly, exactly. That, that's my objection there. Uh, and then we have Shake Shack, the Muslim burger spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen. Every time we have a serious discussion. <laughs> uh, DJG. Oh, here we go. Uh, he says, I'm a Messianic Jew and I have had to defend what I believe to family. I stand on what the Torah and him and say they, uh, and they depend on tradition and writings of the rabbis. Good. So, so yeah, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm thinking in terms of Cool. Like if you're if you're a Jewish rabbi doing apologetics, it's it seem and you're you're reasoning from the writings of the rabbis and so on. It seems like that would be geared towards internal disagreements within Judaism, or dealing with with Christianity. 
So what mm-hmm. we're talking about with apologetics is like if someone said, hey, why should I believe that that is true? Why should I believe that Judaism is true? Like what would the what would a case look like? That's what that's what we're not familiar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Anthony Stevens says, have you read any of Tim Stratton and J.P. Moreland's recent work on free will? They just co-authored a paper together. If so, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, so it, t- Tim Stratton, I'm assuming, is giving a case for libertarian free will and, and pointing out some of the issues. And uh, in fact, I think that's I think that's how I saw this video. I think t- Tim Stratton was responding to it. He laid out uh, he laid out an argument pointing out the problem uh, with determinism. But yeah, if you're going with J.P. Moreland or 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 Tim Stratton, that should give you a, a basic breakdown. Now, the question is, what kind of defenses can Alex give? And we're about to see one. Uh, Zaid here says the human brain isn't hardwired for truth. It's hardwired for this is why I was saying that uh, some of the comments are relevant to what we we're just talking about. The human brain isn't hardwired for truth. It's hardwired for survival. So why isn't agnosticism respected? Why is it so hard for people to say, I just don't know? And I'm not sure if we ever will. Uh, Zaid, yeah, I think that is, if I were a naturalist, I would think that that is the correct position. In other words, I would say, okay, yes, if I'm, if I'm talking about things like, oh, this is, you know, this is in front of me. Oh, there's a cup right here and so on. Stuff that is like immediate right here in my experience, uh, maybe some history and so on. Things like that. Yeah, we can understand how we're getting to those. If you're talking about like metaphysical truths and and cosmology and uh, ethics, the further you get away from anything that our cognitive faculties were designed for, according to a naturalistic view, the less reliable you should treat it. And so the correct response should be, man, how would I know? Like, pe- like people don't get it. There, there are people who will read Hume and think that Hume is siding with atheism. Hume is an actual skeptic. If you, ask, if you ask Hume his actual position, it would be something along the lines of, yep, the universe looked designed, but why in the name of common sense would I trust myself or something like that? Um, so yes. Now the question is, the, the question that arises is, what if that's not how you got your cognitive faculties? So if you if that's how you arrived at your cognitive faculties, yes, agnosticism, at least on certain issues, would seem like a very wise position Uh, unless unless theists make a case. And then you can conclude that your cognitive faculties had some sort of higher purpose or something like that. But they're going to have to make that case. This is very related to how I um, how I view religion in general, um, and I've I've often said that I have um, you know, respect for um, religious belief and religion and history, and I don't I don't I, like when when some atheists say religion is the worst thing that ever happened mm-hmm. without Stupid. religion this and that I Stupid. I disagree with it and I think religion is actually a very um, it, it, it was bound to happen. It is a completely necessary part of human uh, civilization of development. Um, but but what that means when I say that is not that, uh, you know, um, what, what, I, what I acknowledge when I say that is that to me, it looks like the religion is, you know, humans trying to um, understand the, 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 the nature, the natural world around them, the realities around them, and to interpret the things that they see and to uh, come to the those conclusions that make the most sense to them while also not going far enough and just finding comfort in order to um, stabilize their lives or stabilize society. And I think that that is something admirable, you know, because it's it's a um, it's a quest for understanding for for truth. It might not be true, but it is it's nice it's respectable but that's also that then also leads me exactly to this problem it looks like uh all the ideas that people came up with are just their best explanations which are better than yours (laughs) naturalistic way that there actually is principles of truth another concept that comes from the extra natural world that these principles exist. So, so far I've mentioned free will, good, free right, will, and wrong, right and wrong, reason and truth, reason right? All and things truth. that we consider extremely key in our daily lives and that Alex considers key in, in what he does. It's, I assume, why you get up every morning or at least why you feel you get up every morning. You know, wh- 
what, what, what gets you up to do your podcast. It's because you want to say things that you believe are reasonable, are going to convince people to act in a better way, or I assume not a worse way, that, that get people to, to change their lives in some way in a self-motivated fashion that's not merely in a, a sort of Pavlovian response to circumstance and environment. So if I were going to talk about the atheist delusion, that's what I would suggest is the delusion, that, that, that an atheist can use terminology that is drawn from a world that is external to atheism for itself. And again, that's not an argument for God even. That's just an argument against atheism. Again, I think the, the arguments against God are, are, are fairly compelling, and I think the arguments against atheism are fairly compelling. This is one of the things that I've said to Sam Harris. Um, and I think that the difference is that most people who believe in God have expressed doubts, and a lot of people who are atheists tend to be more religious in this way than many of the people who are God believers. Did you catch that? That's actually... By, by the way, a little, little side note, because we're talking about how cordial these guys are compared to the double guys, but Ben just talked for four minutes straight, four minutes straight. No interruption. Isn't that weird? No, no shouting them down and so on. Uh, Nobody's so, saying anything about lubricants and dildos. Yes, why are you shaking? Why are you stuttering? Why are you stuttering? Huh? <laughs> could you, could you imagine tossing a double guy into this mix? It's like dumpster fire. You've been humiliated. You've been destroyed. Look how ins 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 insecure he is. The comment sections would be like totally destroyed and stuff yeah. like that. So this is this is just this is human behavior. Look, very nice. <laughs> uh, so Ben, he he tossed in something interesting at the very end. So one, that's a that's not something you'd normally hear a theist say. He says he thinks basically there. Are, there are good arguments ag against atheism, and there are good arguments against theism. And then he said, one difference I've noticed is that theists usually ex are, are willing to express some sort of doubt. And he said that atheists now seem to be more religious in the sense that they won't. They won't, they won't uh, think about whether they're wrong. You, uh, present company excluded AP. But he's saying, it, it sounded like he's saying that atheist, let me rewind that just to see that last part. It sounded like he's saying that that lots of atheists now are more dogmatic than lots of theists. Let me see if I got oh, that right. Oh, there you go. To atheism for itself. And again, that's not an argument for God even. That's just an argument against atheism. Again, I think the, the arguments against God are, are, are fairly compelling. And I think the arguments against atheism are fairly compelling. This is one of the things that I've said to Sam Harris. Um, and I think that the difference is that most people who believe in God have expressed doubts, and a lot of people who are atheists tend to be more religious in this way than many of the people who are God believers. <laughs> you well, well yeah. something's yeah. certain. We don't do uh, cold opens or soft starts here on the big conversation. Alex. Well, I am. All right. So we're about to go into uh, AP's hero that he has acknowledged is the uh, most rational person in all of atheism, and therefore. In all of his human history. Yeah. All right. Uh, any thoughts before we, any thoughts we need to cover before we jump into Alex's <clears throat> response? You will now see the, the thieves will get humiliated. That's it. Oh, actually, uh, hey, we got here, uh, we got a response from, uh, an Orthodox Jew. Orthodox Jew here, Jewish apologetics are generally either defensive or internal with other Jews because we are forbidden from proselytizing. Okay. That's interesting to know. So we have your right. answer. So. It sounds like they, if someone were to challenge them, then they could give a, a sort of a defensive response, but that they are not going to be going around saying, here's why this is true, and this is why uh, all of you out there should believe it. Powerful stuff. Look at, look at the kind of people you bring over from your channel, AP. Are you ready? Look at this. Giovanni. Mike Roch <laughs> is a great debater. He is able to bait his opponents into <laughs> classical debate traps. Some have even called him a master baiter. This, these are the people you bring over from your channel when we're having a discussion, <laughs> when we're having a, a careful discussion. I'm pretty sure this is your own. Nope, that is, <laughs> these people followed you over. Cosmic Surfer says, uh, shake it before you break it. Sells sticks to train their child brides. Shake it before you bake it. Shake it yeah. before you break it. Nice, nice. I'm proud of my audience. We're proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're proud of that. <laughs> uh, a Good. summarized form of the evolutionary argument against naturalism by based Planiga can be read at evolution versus naturalism, why they're like oil and why they're like oil, water and oil on books and culture. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
That is a difficult, there's just a difficulty. Uh, Planiga just points it out and he says, hey, if, you, if you're a naturalist and then the only game in town for how you arrived at your cognitive faculties is evolution, if that standard Darwinian picture is correct, here's how you got your cognitive faculties. Can you trust these with this? With... He's actually, Planiga is actually more, more strict than I would. I would say, okay, we can trust our, our cognitive faculties in terms of, you know, stuff that's, that we deal with regularly. Whereas he's not even granting that. He's just like, you can't, you can't affirm that your cognitive faculties are even generally reliable. Uh, let's see. I, th I would say, um, for me, the most compelling and the most difficult argument um, for God so far that is just, um, that still has me thinking a lot is um, Ray, Ray Comfort's uh, banana argument. That is definitely something that I go back to all the time and I don't know, which makes this, me rethink everything. This is why you bring all these uh, weirdos over from your channel, AP, because we have... <laughs> Me and all, me and all my viewers, we try to have serious discussions, and then you start talking about bananas and stuff. I I brought up a genuine argument that because you like it. bananas. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you familiar with the argument by Ray Comfort about the, the banana? Uh, I I recall it from years ago. I don't remember what it is. It's um. You want to give some banana? About, it's something about how the banana fits, uh, you know, perfectly into perfectly your hand. in the hand. Into your grip, and yeah, that's peels, yeah. peels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there you have it. But but you're familiar with uh, Ali G's banana argument for oh, with him for, no. for evolution. Don't you remember? He's like, <laughs> does you like bananas? Oh, see, he like bananas, but he don't think we came from monkeys. Right. <laughs> oh yes, okay, okay. <laughs> remember, I remember that? I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Justin here says, uh, AP weekly sobs and turns to Visine for comfort <laughs> A <laughs> equals atheist. D Wood stands strong in the toughest times equals Christian. Draw your, draw your own conclusions. Who nice. started that? Was that, a, was that a thing going on? For I don't know. Time? Like that, that meme just, I started seeing that in our, in our chat and it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, the next Zucker Nike said, David, you stole my smoking the Quran idea yesterday. How dare you? Uh, no, you got the idea from me. You just didn't realize it. You are 12 years old. How would you have the idea? Yeah. Of yeah you're not supposed to be smoking anyway. Yeah. Uh, Matthew says, do you think since Hellenized Jews existed during the time of Jesus, Ben could now use Aristotelian logic like a Thomas Christian and then simply chalk it up to heritage? Uh, yeah, why not? Yes, yes, he yes. could. Yes, he could. And again, he's the, the arguments he's, he's giving would be standard sort of... Uh, not full presuppositional apologetics, but, uh, you know, sort of presuppositionalist apologetics. But let's go ahead. And you ready for uh, you ready for your boy Alex's response? I have ready for your boy for... to be humiliated. I have been waiting for it all my life. Watch him. Watch him tremble. Watch him tremble before the Jews. <laughs> I'm glad to begin on a point of agreement with you, Ben, that, uh, yes, if there is no God, there is no free will, but I think that's because of the truth of, this, of, of the latter of those statements. That I suppose the biggest criticism that I made of you in a, in a video response that I made to the atheist delusion, and, and this show does seem to have an extraordinary capacity for putting me face to face with people that I've been talking smack about online. So <laughs> thanks again. By the way, I should say it's a great video, and everybody should watch it if they have it. Alex. Well, I am glad to begin. I missed it because I was how, reading, how I was reading a comment. Huh? Oh, how wholesome. I love this, man. Like, the point this is of agreement amazing. with you, Ben. That and they're like encouraging yes, each other no to God, check out each other's videos. There is no free so. will, but I think that's because of the truth of, this, of, of the latter of those statements. That I suppose the biggest criticism that I made of you in a, in a video response that I made to the atheist delusion, and, and this show does seem to have an extraordinary... See, he admits that it's an atheist delusion. Yeah. Yeah. The, of, of the latter of those statements that I suppose the biggest criticism that I've made of you in a, in a video response that I made to the atheist delusion and and this show does seem to have an extraordinary capacity for putting me face to face with people that I've been talking smack about online. Smart, so, <laughs> smart. Thanks again. By the way, I should say it, it's a great video and everybody should watch it if they haven't. Well, uh, I'll, I'm going to put that uh, 
put that in the description, I think, that, that glowing endorsement. <laughs> the principal <laughs> agreement that I think I had with you, Ben, is that there was a subtle, or not so subtle, implication in my view that yes, uh, with no God, there's no free will. But somehow having God can solve this problem. I mean, you said a moment ago that you don't think you can establish God's existence through reason alone, but assuming that you do believe in the existence of free will, you think it's a real thing that you have. Yes. And simultaneously saying that if there is no God, then free will makes no sense. Yes. That does read to me like an argument for God's existence, such that in order to to, to either say that there is free will, in order to say that there is free will, one must believe in God. And, and that does strike me as well, I mean, an argument it, for God's existence. I mean, yeah, so if you were to put this in, you know, you'd have to say, if there is no God, then there is no free will, but there is free will. You could put it into an argument like that. So, he, so he's pointing out that this is a kind of argument, mm -hmm. whereas, it, yeah, it didn't seem that Ben is actually presenting that really as an argument he's presenting it more as a problem for for atheism like this is what you're stuck with if you deny gods i guess you could loosely call it an argument like if you okay if if you have two main positions and you point out a flaw with one you're kind of you know favoring the other or something like that but i mean he's just saying he he's not even ben wasn't even like showing hey we do have free will. It's more like we can't function as if we don't. We function as if we have free will. Um, but I mean, that's that's pretty standard. I mean, even even determinists believe that we function as if we have free will. That they think it's a kind of illusion, um, which I think is Alex's position. But let's check this out. To slightly curve that, or, or to to kind of sand off the the rough edges there, I would say that. The argument I made is is an argument for something extra natural. Sure. Now you can call okay. that God or not God, but but the but the the thing that I'm making the argument for is that you cannot get from a materialist Darwinist universe to yes. free will. That is not possible. So I know that the way you solve that is that you say that there is no free will. That's right. And what I'm saying to you is you don't act that way. I hear this all the time. People say, "Look, you may say there's no free." What do you want to jump in? Uh, I think that was a pretty accurate description of what, um, what I heard Alex say in the past about, um, if no God, then no free will. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's it. Well, but you don't act as though that's the case. I, I, I suppose that I'm just confused as to what it would look like for somebody to act as if they believe there was no free will. I mean, the very argument that there is no free will that I subscribe to, at least one of the various mm -hmm. forms that it takes, is a, a sort of Schopenhauerian view that you can do as you will, you just can't will what you will and that you are essentially just a biological machine reacting to its uh, to, to its internal. Did everyone catch, uh, I'll rewind it a little bit, but catch, you can, you can do as you will, but not will what you will. So the idea mm -hmm. there is, uh, if you can do what you will, then you have a kind of, you definitely have a kind of freedom. You have a kind of freedom. You, you, you're not being externally constrained. So if I want to, uh, if I want to eat a sandwich, I can eat a sandwich. I can do as I will. But you you can't control your will in that sense, right? So you can do as you will. You can't will uh, as you, you you can't will whatever you want. You can't just change your will like that. Uh, now you'd have to clarify because you can, of course, modify your will over time. Um, but the point is, he's talking. You have a kind of freedom. So I, I, you definitely have a kind of freedom. And this is one of the things these debates come down to is defining exactly what you mean by freedom of will, because that's going to that's going to be the difference between a hard determinist and a compatibilist. A compatibilist, they, they equally agree that we are determined, but a compatibilist believes that uh, that de being determined, everything you're doing, being determined, uh, is compatible with you having the kind of freedom that makes you morally responsible for your actions, whereas a hard determinist says you're determined and that's incompatible with you having the kind of freedom that would make you morally responsible. Um, so yeah, he's just drawing attention there that no, we, I do have certain kinds of freedoms, but not, not others. So, and as far as what your will, what your will is sound like he thinks that he's a kind of machine there, which would be correct from his. Schopenhauer view. has this, um, th th this, this view that is, if you want to you know, dumb it down and explain it in a very simple way that, um, that humans are just these um that humans are just uh these 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 organisms this pathetic existence that um all it wants to do is just to continue existing and to uh reproduce and um 
and we are basically at the mercy of that and throughout life we are um as humans we subconsciously uh you know put on a mask or make up certain concepts just to further that goal which drives us and which we are not really in control of and um within that within that whole picture in that in that theater we just make tiny little steps with the you know the, the the possibilities that we have but we can't really change anything we are just mindless beings actually um realizing that this is uh maybe new for uh for lots of people i mean everyone's heard of free will and so on but as far as the positions i don't know if people can see this i just drew it let me let me blow us up here real quick all right so can everyone see this i just jotted it down okay all right so here you have uh, three basic positions. Let me get rid of this comment real quick. Just break it down real quick, just because it will help later on. All right. So hard determinism, libertarianism, L, and compatibilism, right? And so these are the three main positions as far as the free will debate. Uh, each, each two of these groups agree with some agree on something, and then they disagree with the other. So. Uh, Hard determinists and libertarians agree that that uh, that deter being determined being determined is incompatible with being morally responsible. Got it. So these these two, hard determinists and libertarians, agree that being determined is incompatible with being morally responsible for your actions. And so they disagree with compatibilists. Compatibilists believe that that the kind of freedom that would make you morally responsible is compatible with being determined. So these guys agree on that. Uh, libertarians and compatibilists agree that we are morally responsible for our actions. And they disagree with hard determinists on this. Hard determinists believe you're not morally responsible for your actions. And compatibilists and hard determinists agree that we are determined. And they disagree with libertarians who think that we aren't. So those are the basic positions. And so Ben is in the libertarian camp. I'm not. I'm not really familiar with uh, with Alex, except for what we've just heard here. It sounds like he's a hard determinist. He believes that certain kinds of freedom are compatible. But I mean, hard determinists agree with that too. So he sounds like a hard determinist. That's what he sounds like. So these are the positions that are sound like they're being discussed right now to me. Unless anyone is more familiar with Alex and he is actually a compatibilist or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, everyone got that? There, there is a video that you made a while ago, which is like, um, which was like, you are still not free. You are, you, you are not free at all. And he was responding to Sam Harris, mm -hmm. where he's, he was arguing that you basically have no ounce of freedom as far as i remember he might be he might have a hard determinist position but I, i'm not i don't want to misrepresent him let's see yeah he sounds like a based on what we've, we've said he, he said here he sounds like a hard determinist which uh and, mm -hmm. and by the way you know uh, compatibilism there is a slight difference between compatibilism and soft determinism in the sense that a person could you could be a libertarian and yet in say hypothetically uh, free will would be compatible with determinism, but I just don't believe we're deter we're actually determined. So you could be a kind of limited compatibilist, even if you didn't actually believe that you were determined. Uh, but it's generally used interchangeably. But anyway, hard determinism used to be distinguished from soft determinism, which is now called compatibilism. But it was, I think it was William James who was calling it soft determinism, but it was like, he was talking about like soft-minded, like you don't, you're not willing to accept the, uh, the implications you still want to believe that you have freedom of will even if you think you're determined and so on so uh, they, they were called soft soft determinists but keep in mind softies hard determinists and soft determinists agree on exactly how much how we are determined it's, they don't think we're a little less determined they still think we're determined it's just whether you have the relevant kind of uh freedom so uh, alex there was pointing out that you do have you do have kinds of freedom even if you're completely determined, you could have freedom from external constraint or something like that. Uh, a libertarian is normally going to require that you have 
some sort of freedom to do otherwise. In other words, you're not responsible if you could not have done otherwise. And so if you're, deter if you're determined, you actually couldn't do otherwise. And so libertarians generally want to believe that we are in some way in indetermined. That if you, if I stopped, if I stopped right now suddenly and we were able to rewind the clock five minutes, I could actually do something else. Like everything, everything exactly the same. You could rewind the clock and perhaps I could do something different this time. Very difficult. That's kind of weird. But Alex is going to explain why. Uh, you want to say something before I jump back into this? Uh, no, I'll, I'll save it for later. Okay, good. Because I'm sure it's really, really important. Uh, MAP, talk about master debater. <laughs> and evolutionary drives. That's what's happening. Now, call that nihilistic if you like. That's a separate question. But a sort of Schopenhauerian view that you can do as you will, you just can't will what you will. Uh, and that you are essentially just a biological machine reacting to its, uh, to, to its internal and evolutionary drives. That's what's happening. Now, call that nihilistic if you like, that's a separate question, but mm. as to the question of how this would make one act, the idea that this might uh, cause us to sort of lay around in bed all day or something, the very mechanism that I think is responsible for eliminating the possibility of free will, that is, the drives that make people do what they do, like I say, do exactly that. Make people do what they do. They make them get out of bed in the morning. Why do you get out of bed and go and make your breakfast if there's no free will? So well, you go and get breakfast because there's no free will and something is driving you to do that. That's outside of your control. For sure. So the, so. Um, for sure. Yeah. So as far as Ben Shapiro's criticism, I mean, it's, it's he's got a couple of them sort of jumbled together. But as far as what Alex is responding to there is the idea that and Ben's the one who who brought up like getting up, getting out of bed. What makes you get up and get out of bed and go do your show and all this stuff? It's because you th it's built into you to think that, hey, uh, you know, I have my reason and I can think freely through this issue and other people can as well. And so I'm trying to reason with them and uh, have discussions about ethics and people can we, we're capable of of uh, changing our positions in a uh, evaluating reasons in a non-determined fashion. And it sounds like Ben's saying, that's what you assume you're doing. And then Alex's response is, well, suppose a, you think that if someone is determined, if someone believes he's determined, he's just going to sit in bed and go, this is what I'm determined to do. Or is he going to get up and, and continue living and going and doing all the you know same things he, he would do? Uh, so Al I would say Alex is entirely correct on this, that... Even if you believe you're completely determined, you're still going to get up and make breakfast and go to work and do things you're interested in and so on. The real area where this would come into play is what happens when you've done something wrong. If you're an actual hard determinist, you believe you are determined, you were completely determined. And so it would affect your view of your own moral responsibility, whereas someone who's more like a libertarian would... It would be, I don't know, it seems easier to blame yourself, say, hey, I should have done something else, whereas that, it's not really open to you on determinism. Uh, we good to continue, AP? Or are yeah. More, um, or are more your perverts going to come over here and say pretty awful thing? The, the, the thing is, um, I, many years ago, I think I was uh, obsessed with the topic Um and read a bunch of stuff, thought about it lengthily, um, listened to different perspectives, watched some interviews uh, that I talked to you about before, um, oh, so, some some documentaries and some uh, you know from, from some from a neurologic neuroscientific perspective, um, and, and I feel like I dropped it at some point because I felt like I'm breaking my brain, and in the end, this entire discussion is just about. Um, it's just theoretical. It's just about uh, figuring out how things actually work. But um, in the end, it doesn't change anything at all. It is all just about theory. It could, however, understand, uh, help understand why people do the things they do, whether people should be, you know, punished in certain ways for the things they do or not, and all that. But it's it's largely theoretical, and it will not necessarily change the way people act you can 
come to the conclusion that nothing is in your hands, but you will still, you know, get a, get out of bed, eat uh, eat breakfast, live your life, because that's what you can do. That's what the body that you are living in demands. The theory doesn't change the fact that in reality you exist in this world. Yeah, there is a distinction between determinism and fatalism. Mm -hmm. And lots of people think that when we're talking about determinism, we're talking about fatalism. Mm -hmm. And that's my that's my kind of natural view. Like before I was a Christian, that's like I determinism for me was basically like like fatalism in the sense that uh, whatever I do, I was determined to do. So it's not like I could, uh, you know, what else what else am I going to do? In other words, if I'm standing by you and I slap you in the head, well, I was determined to do that. So how can you even blame me? Right. Um, but fatal fatalism is is the idea that whatever happens is going to happen. It doesn't matter what you do. Now, notice that's not the same thing as determinism. It does matter what you do. It's just you happen to be determined in what you're going to do. But what you do actually does play a role. So. Um, let's see. Jesse here says shaky niece, shaky niece, the nervous Muslim. Shaky knees. <laughs> oh, shaky knees. <laughs> yeah. Shaky knees. Uh, Samuel, Samuel here says, hi, David. My recent live stream has been targeted by copyright strikes was called Kung Fu Islam. How do I avoid this? Appeal takes forever as well. Well, Samuel, it depends on whether you're actually violating the copyright rules. Uh, yes. If you were, then yeah, you're just in trouble and you got to be more careful. If you weren't, and some people do file false copyright strikes and so on, then yeah, you're going to have to fight it and it's just going to take a little while. Um, usually they try to, they try to evaluate pretty quick. It does suck because they'll give the other person like 10 days or 30 days or whatever to, uh, to deal with that and so on. But yeah, sometimes you just got to fight it. True All story. Right. True story. To get back to the nihilism point, which you kind of put aside, so that, that means that this conversation is essentially worthless in any sort of real sense. I mean, effectively, we were driven here by evolutionary biology and environment to have this conversation. Everybody who's watching this is driven by evolutionary biology and, and environment to have a particular reaction to that thing and ever round the cycle goes. That seems like a very purposeless life. Maybe that's, maybe the, again, I'm drawing from a realm that is not evolutionarily, bio, biologically you know, connected. You know, the, the word purpose is, is really, teleology obviously has been taken out of the realm of science pretty thoroughly by, by atheists and by, by many people in the sciences. Although I, I would argue that, again, most scientists speak in the realm of teleology literally all the time and they're yes. borrowing language from the language of teleology, even when they're describing functions of particular body parts, right? The heart pumps blood in order to right. keep you alive, right? They're, they're constantly using language that's teleological in nature. Mm -hmm. um, the, the real question that I have, and this, this is what goes to the question that you were asking at the beginning, before the, the sort of pre-question question, which was the good of religion to society. One of those goods is people believing that their free will matters and this mm -hmm. actually is a useful thing. So Go ahead. Oh, I was going to point out that there are hard determinists who agree with that. Mm -hmm. There are hard determinists, um, Saul Smolansky, I believe. So he's a hard determinist who believes that even though even though he is convinced that we are determined, that every thought, every belief, and so on is determined by straightforward physical necessity, he believes that it's actually bad for people to believe that. And therefore, you, it's good to encourage the illusion that you have free will, specifically because people who believe that they are free in that sense, in the moral sense, are better able to moderate their behavior. In other words, if you don't think you're morally responsible, which is what hard determinism would teach, if you don't believe you're morally responsible for your actions, you don't blame yourself and therefore you do, you're less inclined. Uh, so it's not that everyone would be less inclined, it's that certain people would be less inclined to moderate their and control their behavior if they thought that whatever they do, they're just determined to do it. And so he actually encourages the illusion of free will because it, it can be beneficial to society. And so it seems like he would favor the view that, hey, if religion convinces you that you're morally responsible, then that's good for society, even though you're completely determined. Anything on that, AP? I agree. You agree completely. 
Rasal Smolansky. My goodness. All right, here we go. Well, I believe that it is deeply important for people in society to believe that they have the capacity to change themselves and to make different decisions than what biology would drive them to. So you say, well, it's biology that drives you to get out of bed in the morning, which it's just funny because he's saying the same thing that certain hard determinists say. It's like it's really good to believe this. Like there are hard determinists say, absolutely, it's good to believe in that illusion. Whereas he seems to be thinking of it in terms of, hey, it's good. And therefore, you know, we have to we really have to believe it. Will matters. And this mm -hmm. actually is a useful thing. So I believe that it is deeply important for people in society to believe that they have the capacity to change themselves and to make different decisions than what biology would drive them to. So you say, well, it's biology that drives you to get out of bed in the morning, which is almost Calvinist and in, in sort of the, the, mm -hmm. the way that it's described, right? It's like you're predestined to get out of bed in the morning, so thus you get out of bed in the morning. But the reality is that we are constantly making decisions as though those decisions make a difference in the universe. And what social science actually does tend to show is that when people believe that they have control over their own actions, and when they believe that they're, they're capable of changing the way that they live, they do make those changes with more alacrity and in better directions than if they don't believe that. If people tend to believe in a deterministic universe, they do act worse. So it may work. This is, this is going to be sort of Straussian in its implications, but the, that may work for you. You're a very high IQ individual who can somehow reconcile the idea of living a very purposeful life with the idea that actually there's no purpose to anything. Mm -hmm. But for the vast majority of people, that is not actually how they live. And I would suggest that even in your daily life, you don't get out of bed in the morning thinking, man, my biology is driving me this morning to get on the bike, have a great day, the sun is shining, that's my biology doing this. And I don't think that, that most people who live purposeful lives, even if they believe that everything they're doing is predetermined by the world around them, by their own biology, I, I don't believe they actually feel that. that. They have to engage in what they themselves would, would term an illusion in order to feel a, a sense of purpose and meaning in their lives. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'll yeah, I just, to... yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring everyone up to date on the argument. So Ben starts off by pointing out that um, the way even determinists live or the way an atheist would live, he still lives like he believes that he has free will and that he can trust his reasoning ability and that there's truth and things like that. And uh, he points out he doesn't think that actually fits very well with atheism. So he's saying atheists are living like they're not atheists. And Alex's response is, what are you talking about? I believe we're determined and we, I have biological drives and so on. And so I get up and do the same things. Do you think I would just sit in bed paralyzed all day because I believe I'm determined? No, I still get up. I still do my job. I still eat. I still live in society. I still have friends and have discussions like this. It all makes uh, so I, so no, believing in determinism would not just make you shut down and sit still. And then Ben's response is, hey, that may be great for you, but I'm not talking about not functioning. He then zeroes in on like the moral issue that there's a big difference between someone who believes that every action he's doing is determined by causes that are beyond his control and someone who believes that his actions are uh, come from him. Um, in other words, that that they're not determined and that he can actually do, uh, he can do this, he, he can do X or he can do not X. Um, and so Ben is pointing out that it's actually better for society, for people to believe that they are morally responsible. And as I was listening to it, just, I mean, Cosmic could agree with all that. Alex could agree with everything he said. I, I do agree. I, he could say, I do agree with you that it is better. And so, yeah, it, it, it's good. Great. Share your little idea with uh, society and, and keep that going. But it's just not true. <laughs> that That's the thing that I was trying to point out at the very beginning, uh, trying. Maybe I, I wasn't very, very great at pointing it out, but um, which is that um, what Ben Shapiro does, you know, when, when, he, when he talks about this is... Um, it looks like instead of trying to prove or instead of making a point to uh, you know to show us that it's actually true he is just trying to point out that the opposite would be very difficult to handle and uh, that is basically the point that he wants to wants to bang on and and, and emphasize uh, because it's true 
it might be very difficult to handle. I, I know this for myself. It might be very difficult to handle um, if, if you come to the conclusion that everything you do in life, everything you do in the very moment that you are right now, that ev that all of it is uh, pretty much predetermined by factors that are completely outside your your control. It will be. It might be very hard to then go on from there with that thought. It might lead you to some really, I don't know, difficult conclusions or very messed up conclusions you just mentioned earlier. And this is, and, and Ben Shapiro is basically addressing the, the example that you just mentioned. You said, um, that's how you saw it in the past. Like if, if I slap you in the face, you know, if, if I, I was I was determined to do that, it wasn't really in my control. So why, why would I be guilty for that? Uh, you could come to wild conclusions like those. And um, the thing that I thought back, uh, like a while ago was just, if I look at my life, it's, it, it seems like much of what I'm doing right now, including very trivial, very tiny things like um, you, gave, you give me two choices and I choose this one because I'm more familiar with that one. I like that one better, but that might be because I was raised at a certain place by certain parents in a certain environment at a certain point, And some things happened to me throughout my life, which led me to uh, preferring that specific thing, which now makes me want to do that very specific thing. So there is a lot of stuff that is completely out of my control until I get there. Even at, even, even to that trivial extent, it looks like I have no, I have very little freedom in how I think, how I act, uh, and, and so on. But knowing that, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay, I, I might accept that in theory, everything is, um, I, I am basically at the mercy of a bunch of factors that are totally out, out of my control. But okay, so be it. I still have to go on and, you know, uh, eat dinner now and <laughs> then go on. And be completely miserable and depressed. Yes. Because yes. nothing you do actually comes from you. Yes. <laughs> uh, Stephen M. here says, God is to be presupposed since the alternative is absurdity. Arguing is unbiblical. And by the way, this is, this is why I said um, Ben's argument here is sort of a, he's not giving the full presuppositionalist argument, but he's in that direction as far as, hey, in our, in our daily living and experience and reasoning and so on, here are the things that are presupposed. Uh, but uh, Stephen here says, God is to be presupposed since the alternative is absurdity. Arguing is unbiblical since it speaks of all men bearing this knowledge. It's a suppression of truth and the dimming of conscience. I'm not sure about arguing being unbiblical since there are arguments in the Bible. And if we disagreed with you, about what you just said right here, you would have to give some sort of argument for it. Stop arguing, David. No, you stop arguing. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, so this is the people who have discussion, who come and comment in the Super Chat uh, on my channel. But then you've got the people who come over from your channel. Check out Bobby here. Video idea debate. David's wood versus apostate prostate. See, <laughs> this, is what, this is what your guys do. So people they follow they follow us over here because you're over here and these are the kinds of things this is what you produce this is what atheism produces ladies and this gentlemen. is this Later. is high quality comment man. <laughs> like, what do we want? uh eddie <laughs> eddie here says uh suicide disproves darwin humans are 3d human uh 3d animals 2d i guess the idea is that animals don't commit suicide humans do so we're different that doesn't make much sense to me. Or, or since you would be wired for survival, maybe we'll see. Uh, I love. I mean, you, you could explain that suicide is a result of. Uh, it, it sounds messed up if you look at it, but uh, you could say that that's that um, an intelligent being develops the idea of committing suicide, whereas a much less intelligent being that can't properly reason and can't think about uh, you know the the reason behind things is probably not going to commit suicide because it doesn't even know what it is or why it should do such a thing. Uh, but what if those lesser beings develop to such a level where they start doing it too? I don't know. I love New York City. Life is full of life is full of mysteries. Yeah. Religion is a way of living. That's the kind evangelism of stuff that I'm thinking about all the time. Yeah. Peaceful yeah. invitation to Christianity, but Islamism is killing non-Muslims. 
Alhamdulillah, beautiful. Yeah. AF Iron says, uh, AFAC universe only spawned one creation event, Big Bang. Life originated, should have died, but replicates expansion rate, near perfect gravity, etc. Uh, yeah, so these would be usually, beautiful. these would usually be arguments for theism. Yeah, beautiful. Life originated. That is interesting. So guys, think the uh, your naturalist, the first living cell forms and replicates. What? Just has that ability? It's like I build a computer and oh, my computer can actually crank out copies of itself. It's pretty amazing stuff. Hey, you just said that like, like uh, Andrew Tate. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, hang on, hang on. We have Giovanni here. He said, nope, AP is right, I'm afraid, David. I am in fact a fellow Woody. No. <laughs> an AP fan he, he's got the only fans who are total sicko what? perverts and constantly saying sicko perverted stuff you say that and then you see and then you talk about only fans again here like what is this uh oh he, hey, here we go <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> you said it I didn't say anything here you go uh Ben Shapiro says believers are willing to question and atheists are dogmatic but it seems to me that most atheists came to their denial of God through a lot of self-questioning and, and bull. No, they didn't. They're sitting yeah, there. Cool. They're sitting there watching uh, stupid videos on YouTube going, oh, he says, Richard Dawkins says, I'm smart if I just run around going sky daddy, sky daddy, sky daddy. And I could be smart of the smart group. OK, I'll be that. That's how you came to atheism. No, I'm not talking about UAP. I'm talking about most of the, most of your fellow atheists. I am most atheist. You, you were just completely reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, John here. So one of your fans says, I thoroughly enjoy listening to AP. But then again, my mother did drop me on my head when I was a baby. <laughs> it's all making sense. It's all making sense. Nice. All right. Back nice. to cosmic. That's what the evolutionary nice. process, in my view, in my worldview, I've done so it's well, valley. is oh, provide precisely that illusion. I mean, it, it's not as the, I mean, you say, look, you don't get out of bed. So just to be clear, everyone, he is calling an illusion, right? Free will is an illusion. So let me back that up real quick. By Free the world around them, by their own biology. Saying, I, yes, I don't believe they actually works. feel that. They have to engage in what they themselves would, would term an illusion in order to feel a, a sense of purpose and meaning in their lives. Of course, but that's what the evolutionary process, in my view, in my worldview, I should say, has done so well, is provide precisely that illusion. I mean, it, it's not as that, I mean, you say, look, you don't get out of bed in the morning thinking, gosh, you know, look at my biological My drive. neurons are firing, yeah. <laughs> uh, of, of course not, because if I did, then the whole evolutionary purpose that this, this illusion serves would fall away. I mean, you say that this is a fairly purposeless Good life and, and perhaps, a, you know, the implication is that it's a bit of a depressing one. Uh, I, I didn't come here to inspire optimism in people. I just think it is in fact the case. By the way. <laughs> it is in fact the case that free will doesn't exist. And, and we may feel very uh, nihilistic towards that, but uh, as a wise man once said, facts don't care about your feelings. <laughs> and... <laughs> Well played. Well played. See, <laughs> hey, Muhammad Hijab fans, if you're watching, that's how you sick burn someone. That's a sick burn. Right there. <laughs> well played. Yeah, guys. So if you're not familiar with Ben Shapiro, he's famous for the, for saying facts don't care about your feelings. So if he's arguing about something. Well, I feel only like facts don't care about your feelings. And so Ben's case here is, is a lot. It is a lot to do with, hey, this would be much better for society if people think like this. And and so, uh, yeah, Alex says, eh, yeah, facts don't care about your feelings. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Smith. Very, very nice job. And uh, Zaid Smith. here says, how about free choice instead of free will? Yeah, so no one on any view disputes that you have some level of freedom. You have some level of freedom. Like there's a difference between a person who's in a jail cell and a person who's not in a jail cell. You have more freedom if you're not in a in a jail cell. Um, so you can have free choice in the sense that, you know, you can you can choose this or you can choose that. Uh, the dispute is about the sort of the kind of freedom that would be required for moral responsibility. Again, a compatibilist thinks that even though we're determined, we do have the relevant kind of freedom that makes us morally responsible. The hard determinists say, no, we don't. We don't have that kind of freedom. 
But even the hard determinists will say you have certain kinds of freedom. You just don't have the sort of freedom that makes you morally responsible for your for your actions. And up oh, here we go. Justin says, I started it. <laughs> oh, so we're asking who started this meme thing. He says, I started it because AP fans use immature potty humor <laughs> equal atheists. <laughs> <laughs> D Wood fans masterfully manipulate logic and language for a fully mature humor equals Christians. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But actually, we all love AP very much and we are his fans too. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Powerful, powerful. We'll say that the argument against free will, in my view, is based upon something broader than just scientific analysis or empirical research. Rather, we can build an argument, I think, from, from a law of logic. The, uh, the proposition that, that P must either be true or false, and it can't be both, it can't be neither. It has to be one or the other. Now, Excluded. this law of the excluded middle, one of the, one of the foundational precepts of, of, of philosophy, we can simply ask a question of any kind of mental activity, and, and this will be regardless of whether it's material or immaterial, that's what makes this a crucial argument, and an important one, a pertinent one, is that you can ask of that, uh, of that mental activity, is it determined or is it not? That is, is it determined by anything else or is it completely undetermined by anything? If it's undetermined by anything, then it's random and you're by definition not in control of that which is random. If it's determined by something, then it's either determined by something further inside your mind or inside your brain or indeed inside your soul or it's determined by something external to your brain. If it's determined by something external to yourself, I should say yourself rather than your brain here to... Uh, rid this conversation of any implicit materialism exterior to yourself if that's what's determining the action then clearly you're not in ultimate control of that action if it's something inside of yourself somewhere then all you do is push the problem back and you ask the question again is that thing determined or is it indetermined so indetermined did everyone catch that do you catch that ap yes so guys uh this is why i said uh ben's going to point out a problem with Alex's position. And the the issue that Ben's pointing out is not, hey, here's why your position is, is factually false. It's here's why your view just doesn't work well with how we actually live and think of ourselves. Uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. And uh, Alex's response, hey, facts don't care about your feelings here. So it doesn't matter if you feel like this is weird or something like this. He's saying this is, you know, if it's true, it's it's true. But here, Alex flips back the problem. So I want everyone to understand. So the problem that's presented for hard determinists or for, for determinists in general is, again, if whatever, whatever goes on in my mind right now is determined by the past and by laws of nature, then the next thought that pops into my head is just it, how, is it, how is it within my control if it's determined by things that are no longer within my, they're not in my control. Not within my control, so that makes it that just makes it really weird, and that's why someone like Ben just got, it, there. There has to be more than that. There has to be more than just physical particles in motion determining everything I think. So, lots of people would say, "Okay, determinists have a big problem." Yeah, I mean, if I just sit back and think, my own what it's like to be reasoning through issues. It doesn't, I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't seem to me like I'm determined, like everything, every decision is, has kind of already been made and it's all just cause and effect. Doesn't seem like that. And then what Alex just pointed out is, okay, suppose you want to add something else to the picture to avoid this problem. So you're going to add, let's say God, let's suppose you add a soul, a self, whatever you want to call it. There's something that is beyond this straightforward physical necessity. There's something beyond this straight cause and effect series of falling dominoes. There's something beyond that. Okay, what is it? Say, okay, it's a soul. It's a soul. It's outside the realm of physical causation. What Alex just pointed out is, okay, is, is, that, is that soul determined? Is that soul determined? Like by God, when God created your soul, did he, did he make it so that it's determined to do uh, whatever you're going to do? If so, you you're, you haven't gotten away from the problem of you being determined. He goes, but if it's not determined, then what is it? Is it random? It's just random? Because keep in mind, random randomness doesn't help you. In fact, randomness would probably be a bigger problem for yes. 
than determinism. In other words, yes. so let's suppose everything I do is actually determined by cause and effect. Suppose you had something that is genuinely random. And some people have argued for things like this with uh, indeterminacy at the quantum level. Some people argue that you know quantum events are actually undetermined and that you could whatever happens right now you could rewind the clock and let it do it over let it do it over again and a quark could ju- a quark could just do something else um okay suppose you think okay well that's not determined what if that could actually play what if something that's random could play a role in my actions to where i'm just sitting here and all of a sudden my elbow flies up in the air like that i have no control over it, it just pops up like that if it's random that doesn't help that's not giving me more free will in fact that would seem to be worse it would seem to be worse if i was just randomly doing things all the time so exactly. Alex, is po- Alex is pointing out that, okay, so you don't like this idea that everything is a series of falling dominoes. You want to add something else. You want to add God and, and a soul to the picture. How is that getting you free will? Whatever you're adding to the picture, your actions are either determined or they're random. They're determined or they're random. If they're determined, that's not helping you avoid the problem of being determined. If they're random, that's also not helping you avoid the problem. It wouldn't be determined, but it would be random. That's not giving you free will. That's not the kind of free will you need to believe that you're morally responsible. So he's saying, yeah, I, yeah, we've got the problem that you're pointing out here. And your view doesn't change it. Fantastic. Everyone get that? Yes. I speak on everyone's behalf. So let's see how Ben is going to respond to this random determined you keep going back until you either terminate in something outside of the self something uh or, or i suppose something undetermined and therefore therefore random either of which you are completely out of control in if you say that it terminates in something like a soul people like to do this they say well look with the religious philosophy we have the benefit in, of introducing a soul that doesn't solve anything mm. because you still need to it's not a, it's not a matter of having to explain the mechanism by which the soul brings about actions that may well be a mystery but if it is the case that whatever it is that's doing that is either determined or it's not. And that if it's not, it's random and therefore out of your control. And that if it is, it ultimately terminates in something outside of yourself mm. or something random, and both of which are out of your control. Free will cannot exist. Well, and so, so I would that, be that, argument does, that does argument, that, that argument does rule. So just to clarify, it's uh, Alex's position is that freed, free will in the sense that's required for, for a, a libertarian uh, or re- that's required for genuine moral responsibility, whatever, it's an illusion. It's in, it's incoherent. It doesn't matter what you appeal to beyond physical necessity. It doesn't give you the sort of free will that you think you have or that you think is required. You just don't have it. Too bad. Live with it. Facts don't care about your feelings. Is that your view, AP? No, yes. No, no, yes, yes, probably. See? See, there you had some uh, random quantum fluctuations causing AP to, <laughs> to stutter. Yeah. I and the complete deconstruction of the self. I mean, you're using the term self in this argument in, I think, a couple of different ways. You're saying something outside yourself, but then you're breaking down the self into a bunch of separate components as though the self is a computer. Right? As though if, you, if you took the self and you broke it down into a machine and there, there's like the micro, there's the microchip and you've got the processor, you've got, you've got all these different parts of it. So it has to be coming from here or it has to be coming from here. But I think the very idea that we have of ourselves as selves is as a deciding being. And so the, the attempt to carve that down into, so which parts of the deciding being, that is an avoidance strategy. So I, I don't think that the argument quite holds. Well, if we I mean, can call the self just a, 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 a deciding, a, a deciding being, being, it a deciding being, then that sort of fundamental assumption that we make about the nature of the self, I don't think is going to be incompatible with atheism. How so? Uh, because we're talking about what the self is here. I mean, atheists believe in the self. Uh, everybody believes in the well, self. Well, no, that's not, I mean, that, that, that I, I find difficult to believe. Why, why would an atheist believe in the self? The self? Well, you believe in the self, just not in the way you're talking about it, maybe, right? So here it'd be, everyone believes in a self. It's just going to be what your definition of the yeah, yeah. of a self is. Um, yeah, so where Ben is going with this, and this is why I said, guys, you can... If you go to the philosophers who are dealing with these problems, they will be more careful in laying out their premises and defending them. And they can even bring in like uh, exper- you know, uh, experiments, like neurological experiments and things like that. 
these guys are doing a great job at getting to what the actual discussion is. And it does it doesn't go beyond that. What, what they're saying right now, this is where the discussion is pretty much at. It can get more sophisticated and so on. But this is ba- these these are the basic positions right here. Um, so, hey, you've got a problem if you think you're determined and you think all of our mental uh, w- whatever happens in our minds is just like falling dominoes that are determined by particles, completely mindless particles. That's a problem because now my thoughts, which I think of as rational, are caused by irrational processes, right? So that's a problem. And then Alex points out, well, you've got a problem too, because if you're trying to avoid uh, determinism, whatever you want to add to the equation, a soul, whatever, it's either determined or it's random. Neither Neither one of those makes you morally responsible. So it doesn't help you with the, uh, with the, uh, with the problem. And then Ben, where Ben is going to go with this is, um, yeah, I don't know how this works. That's what, that's where Ben's going to go with it. I don't know how it works. I given physical necessity, I know what that leads to. And I know that can't be, that can't be the ground for human freedom and moral responsibility. The soul, no idea how that would work, but I don't have to. That's what his position is going to be. So uh, the real debate comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, the real debate here. And this is, this would, your answer to this question would kind of depend. I mean, that's going to massively influence which side of this debate you're going to be on. But the basic case for libertarianism, libertarian free will. So that's, I am not determined by physical, uh, physical necessity. Um, and I'm morally responsible. I have the freedom to do other than whatever if whatever I'm doing right now. I had the ability to do otherwise. Um, the real case for that is just what's the best in what's the best source of information about how my mind works. Your answer to that question will pretty much decide which side you're going to be on. A, a libertarian generally thinks what's the best sort of, what's the best source of information on how my mind works. The best sort of the best source of information on how my mind works is me thinking. That's that's what it is. Okay. Does my thinking seem like I am completely determined? Like I can't like it's all it's non-rational processes that produce all of my thoughts and so on. No, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like that to me. And therefore, I'm I'm going to reject the idea that all my thoughts are just particles in motion and so on. I'm going to reject that. Uh or you could think that the best source of information about what goes on in your mind is like neurological studies and studies of the brain and so on. You know, if you do that, then okay, it's all, it's particles, it's particles in motion and so on. So you're going to kind of favor that view. But notice we're kind of getting all of this, all of the big ideas in the free will debate uh, from these two guys who, by the way, are the two people on the planet who always look like kids to me. (laughs) That's true. I don't mean that in a in an insulting way. It's always good. If you get someone who's in his 20s and 30s and he looks like a kid, then guess what? When he's 50, he's going to look like he's 30, right? So uh, any thoughts on any of this, AP? Nope. Very well. Very nice. Hey, you got to, since you brought up Ray Comfort, like a jerk, uh, people still bring up Ray Comfort's banana stuff. Watch The Fool. Why Ray Comfort is atheism's number one clown man. Only fair to represent him honestly, unlike AP. Why'd you straw man him? I don't know. That's all I know. All I know is to straw man. Okay, so we got this here, folks. We'll, everyone check this out later. The Fool, Why Ray Comfort is atheism's number one clown man. So we can actually represent him honestly. All right, let's uh, see where they go with this. Guys, and by the way, there's not much more of a discussion on free will. You kind of get down to these issues and there's really nothing that you can say <laughs> that just says, oh, this proves that this this view is correct. It's kind of, okay, what do you think is the best source of information about, uh, about how you arrive at your beliefs and what your cognitive faculties are and so on? If you think it's this, you kind of end up over here. And if you end up with this, you, it's over here. And uh, here are the problems with this view and here are the problems with that view. And uh, so which which do you think is is most accurate? That's where it's at. Did you ever see Free Willy? That whale movie? Yeah. No, I remember the advertisement though. I remember the whale f- jumping over the kid or something like that in the in the trailer. That's all I remember. 
Okay. Why the heck? See, we talk about the kind of fans. <laughs> we talk about the kind of fans that AP brings over, just randomly spouting stuff, as opposed to the uh, my fans who stick to the issue and just. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you said free will. That's like free willy. You know the free willy? Hey, do you know about whales? Have you ever seen whales before? Did you know that there are whales? It's a series of, of, of non-deciding mechanisms, as you've described. I see that your view of the self is, is an atheist view of the self, a, a, a meatball one. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. Let me back this up a little bit. Uh, but he points out he's calling it the deciding self. So you have to name whatever this ex extra factor that is beyond physical control is. And uh, some people, you, people would just usually call it an agent or something like that. You could call it the soul. He's calling it the deciding self. And he's saying that your deciding self is somehow composed of all these non-deciding things. All these things that don't decide somehow uh, add up to are the parts of the deciding self. So we're talking about what the self is here. I mean, atheists believe in the self. Uh, everybody believes in the well, self. Well, no, that's not, I mean, that, that, that I, I find difficult to believe. Why, why would an atheist believe in the self? The self is a series of, of, of non-deciding mechanisms, as you've described. I see that your view of the self is, is an atheist view of the self, a, a meatball wandering through space, as I've put it somewhat colorfully, the, the sort of Spinoza idea that, that you're- AP, the meatball wandering through space. Stone that's been thrown, and, and you can comprehend that you've been thrown, but you're a stone that's been thrown, and that's just the way that it is. Why would there be in atheist philosophy such a thing as a deciding self? The deciding self, the deciding being, is external to the idea of an evolutionary cause. Because, uh, it, 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 again, it, the, the very word deciding suggests uncaused decision-making. And you've just excluded it through your own philosophy. Uncaused decision-making, I, I suppose, is a concept that I think is unintelligible. And, and therefore, if there, is, if there is an unintelligibility of the self on atheism, I suppose the, the thrust of the criticism that I made to essentially every point you made in that video, except for uh, the argument from motion, is that what you're saying to me, if it applies to atheism, I think simultaneously applies to theism as well. How so? An, an uncaused decision. I mean, what is the process by which a decision is made? Ah, it, but now you're, but now you're, you're falling into the, the same sort of argument that I excluded at the beginning, which was I said that the beauty of religion is that there's a bunch of stuff I don't understand. Hmm. So I can't explain to you how the uncaused self makes decisions. Well, then I can't explain to you how the uncaused self exists on an atheist But you have framework. a burden and I don't. Meaning I, that, I, I don't mean, think that's the case. You, you do though. I mean, the, the, the simple fact is that you are the one who's claiming that a reasonable materialist universe is the cause of all. And so if that's the case, you do have to explain the mechanism in a way that I certainly do not. My entire philosophy rests on the, on the positing of an entire realm of things I don't understand in terms of their interaction with the world. Now, as I said at the very beginning, that leaves me a giant escape hatch. I'm not gonna pretend that that's not a giant escape hatch. It, it acts that, in practice as a problem. giant escape hatch. That's the problem here. That precisely is the problem. I, but, but I'm really wondering how Alex will respond to this. Yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, I just keep wanting to make sure everyone's getting the point of what's being discussed here. So Ben points out, hey, you've got this, you've got this problem. Alex responds, actually, you have the same problem because um, you can't, ex you can't explain how you have this, uh, this, this self that you're talking about, which can do these kinds of special things. And Ben's response is, when we're talking about naturalism, I understand naturalism. I under we understand how particles in motion work. We understand how physics work. We understand how biology works. So these are the only tools you've got at your disposal to explain ourselves. And Ben's, Ben's breaking down, and this just, this just doesn't work. And Alex's response is, well, it doesn't work on your view either. And Ben's responsible. I, I don't say I know how a soul works. I don't. I don't. I don't under. I don't, I don't understand. There are all sorts of things in my worldview that I don't understand. And there, it's going to look like leave it to God. Yeah, there, it's going to look like you're just almost like you're playing around. Like, hey, why don't you hold? Why are you putting yourself to holding yourself to a different standard than you're holding me to? And they're both kind. They're both kind of right here because. Ben is right in the sense that, hey, if I believe in a soul and I believe it's it's responsible, uh, that that I'm a responsible, morally responsible agent who is not determined because of this soul, I don't I don't have to I can just believe in that and not understand how it works, but I can believe that it gets me away from physical causation because that's not that's outside the realm of physical causation. And so I can say, okay, that that sort of rescues me from this physical necessity 
which kind of sucks in your view, Alex. And it seems like Alex is going, well, no, because all I can think of, all I can think of is it that soul or whatever is either determined or it's random. And that's not helping you. So I don't understand how your view. And so Alex's position is all just incoherent. All the talk of free will is, is just, it's incoherent nonsense. It doesn't work. That's the thing. That, 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 that's what I meant earlier, which is that um, it's, it's all just a discussion about theory that, uh, you know, goes into this, this unresolvable realm and in the end doesn't change anything at all. <laughs> it changes everything. Nothing. Hey, look, matter of fact, look at this. Yeah. Constantine Not the Great. Yet. To be fair, Schopenhauer was the OG black pill incel who, unlike Hegel, couldn't get laid, which is probably <laughs> why he hated him. No wonder he was so depressed. <laughs> so philosophy does matter, AP. Schopenhauer was actually married. Um, pretty sure. Oh, he said incel right here. But, <laughs> but he did think that uh, he has his messed up view, Schopenhauer. So he had his messed up view that uh, that love is just a, um, a, a concept, a lie, a survival tactic that humans subconsciously invented in order to... Um, to consume each other for their survival without even liking each other. So it is, um, they, they only make it up in order to uh, reproduce, but normally they don't necessarily like each other. Uh, it, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's pretty messed up. Hey, here, Kendrick Starr says, uh, what are atheists' argument for life forming without God? Didn't you say you like listening to Kendrick Starr? Who? Ken, no, no, not Kendrick. You said you listen to rap. Uh, no, this is Kendrick. This is it's Kendrick Lamar. This is a different. Kendrick. Oh, okay. Well, it rhymes. There, there's not only one Kendrick. <laughs> uh, so, what are atheists' argument for life forming without God? They go, oh, well, obviously we're here, so it must have happened. Durr. Durr. <laughs> I saw. I saw one guy arguing that uh, the original life form would have. Uh, the original life would have uh, appeared as some sort of film on rocks and then a later life would have eaten it all up and therefore it would have eaten the evidence. Pretty good. That's pretty based. Yeah. It's based. Uh, Alex got destroyed, but it's not his fault. He was determined to lose just like far four. Ben got the better Adams aligned at birth paid by Mossad. Wow. Nice. Uh, I actually, I, I mean, I actually, I, I really do like, like this discussion that they are like any, a, a philosopher who's watching this would say, this is a, this is a great introduction. You could use this as an introduction in a philosophy class on free will and just play this and let them get the big ideas out there. This would be and an introduction. Also, what? This would be an introduction. Yeah. You'd. You'd have to do basically what we're doing here. You watch it and then you pause and break down, break things oh, okay, down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I get it. Tends to act as a fundamental principle of faith, right? Again, in, in every moral realm, right? When we get to the problem of good and evil, right? One of the big questions is, well, how can God allow evil to, to take place in the world? And the fundamental religious answer, as it has been for thousands of years, is my mind is not God's, mm -hmm. which is a giant escape hatch. It also happens to be true from a religious point of view. So if I may, that there are... Uh, two sort of escape hatches here. There are two appeals to mystery going on here. And it seems to me that what you're saying is something along the lines of uh, my appeal, my, my simple appeal to mystery here is disallowed in the way that you're allowed to appeal to this yes. this, this mystery because I'm the one making the claim. I think that in <laughs> No, not because I'm the one making the claim, but because the, I'm the one with the burden. I'm not, e I'm not even thinking of this in terms of burden of proof. Like Ben is saying, ah, but you have this position. Well, Ben obviously has a position too. And Ben's just saying, hey, mine's mysterious. I think the real difference is like what Ben should be saying here is, no, y your view is everything is just, is, is physical. It's all physical. It's all particles. We really have a good understanding of how that stuff works. And so if that doesn't really account for our experience, then you've got a problem but I don't, we don't necessarily under, understand the supernatural in the same way. And therefore, you can't challenge it in the same way. So, again, there's something weird about that saying, oh, my view is just, you know, it's off limits for this kind of philosophical analysis. We'll just say, hey, it does it. It does a soul and it fixes the problem. There's just one thing that I have a problem with that I don't um, entirely understand. So, um, Ben did point out at the beginning that, uh, 
that his is not an argument for, but rather just uh, an argument against the um, the atheist position uh, to point out that um, that the atheists live in a delusion with their uh, with their with, with their assertions and assumptions. True, true, true. Yes, they do. But <laughs> but then. Um, but then he says here that 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 atheists have the burden to explain, you know, the the, the self and the driving force behind it, which kind of, I, I don't know, um, it doesn't it doesn't entirely make sense to me how that is uh, how that is connected to his to his criticism. Because I mean, the atheist wouldn't necessarily have the. Bur- I guess if he if he addresses Alex here as the one who responds to him. Then that would that there would be a burden. I guess. Okay, I get that part. All right. Yeah, and again, I just answered my own question. They're, okay, yeah, they're both right. <laughs> I mean, Ben is Ben is correct in saying, "Hey, if I say I believe in a soul and I don't know how it works, you can't you can't then pin me down and say, hey, that it's not clear how that works." Uh, whereas you claiming that everything is physical cause, we understand how that works, and it's uh, and I I see a problem here. Whereas, I mean, Alex's position is, "Hey, if you're if you're positing something and it's not clear how it's actually fixing the problem, why should I think that it fixes the problem? Like, like you're saying, hey, there's this additional thing. I do not understand how that additional thing would fix the problem, because it would mm-hmm. it, it whatever the additional thing is, it would also be determined or random, and I don't see how that fixes the problem. And then Ben's saying, I didn't, I didn't say I, I know how it works. It's just so. Notice, I mean, Ben is correct that there can be this mysterious thing. That we don't understand how it works that would solve the problem. Uh, but it sounds like he's saying something like that. I'm going to have to believe in that because I just can't believe that that what you're saying is actually uh, accounts for my thoughts. I can't believe that. It just doesn't make sense for me to think that my thoughts are are explicable, fully explicable in terms of these particles. I have to believe in something else. Something like that. All right. In yeah, the context of this yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the who's the you and the who's the, the I in yes. a sense, but yes. <laughs> I, I, see, I see what you mean. I'm, I'm speaking for myself there. Sorry. Um, if in the context of this discussion, this this began, the, the subject, which I think is the first one you bring up in this video, free will. Here's this thing that I think exists, and on the basis of its existence, think entails the existence of a God, or, or at least points to the existence of a God. I shouldn't say entail. And then... When I say that I don't think that the, the concept of free will is, is uh, intelligible, and you say, well, how is it intelligible on atheism? And I say, I'm not sure it is, but it's not on theism either. And you say, well, there's my escape hatch. I can appeal to mystery. I don't think the burden is on me there. I think you were the one who was making the claim that free will does exist, that there is this mysterious property mm, of the universe actually, that's that not, that's escapes not this, this that, so, determined or indetermined cr- dichotomy. And then when I say that this is, uh, this, this is unintelligible to me and, and based on what I see to be fundamentally appeal to a law of logic, suddenly I'm the one making the claim. I'm the one with the so, burden who has to do the proving. No, the I, actual, I the actual that claim way. that I originally made, if you if you recall, was a conditional claim. Mm-hmm. I did not claim free will exists, therefore God. I claimed if you believe free will exists, it cannot exist in a materialist universe. Now, mm-hmm. you say, okay, fine, it doesn't exist in a materialist universe. I don't believe in free will. Yes. That's fine. That's totally plausible. As I said right at the top here, mm-hmm. I'm not going to prove to you that God exists today. What I am going to say is that the vast majority of people throughout nearly all of human history have believed there is a thing called a self. It is yes. a deciding self that makes these decisions. If you are a person who believes that, you're right. It can't exist in your world. So I'm not saying that it does exist. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're totally right. And all of this is just a series of chemical firings. That's quite plausible. That's fine. What I have said, and this is the argument that, that hasn't yet been rebutted, is the is the is that society does require an extraordinary number of people to believe that they are capable of making decisions for the good or for the bad. Because Mm. again, not everybody is you. Not everybody is capable of waking up in the morning, putting one half of their brain on hold, the the side that says what I'm doing today doesn't matter and we are all going to wind up in the cosmic nothingness of space anyway and the sun's gonna explode and eat the earth. Most people don't function that way. Mm. And so a, a functional society, a society that actually works, relies on people actually believing that their fate is in their hands and the way that people tend to you, understand you know that. What? Uh, may, may, may I say something? I, I feel like um, I completely disagree uh, with that. It's I, I always think the opposite. 
I always think uh, the the complete opposite of, of what Ben is saying here. I think most people uh, could be totally fine with the idea that uh, you know that that nothing matters and uh, that everything is predetermined, that they are not in charge, that there is nothing after death, that nothing they do has any uh, you know eternal consequences, and they would just go on and live their lives uh, like nothing changed and. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they would party, they would be happy and all that. Uh, on the other hand, people who take these questions more seriously and think about them more deeply, for them it would be it would be more difficult for them and it would be required for them to have something to hold on to. Uh, th- that, that's how I see it. I mean, to most people, you could say in a, in a, in a society where, uh, you know, lots of people don't believe in, 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 in an afterlife or in, um, in, in a higher being, People just live their lives. People don't go around thinking, nothing matters, nothing matters. I don't have to do anything. Destroy, destroy. Well, the, the point is, I mean, Ben made kind of two points there. He's One was the overwhelming vast majority of people have always believed in a kind of self that is inconsistent with straightforward physical necessity. Uh, they mm-hmm. believe that there. They believe that there's something else, and so the ordinary person down through history's concept of the self doesn't seem to line up with all of our rational processes. Are actually just caused by complete irrational processes. Um, so he's pointing that out, and then the other thing he's saying is it's it's better for society. So that's what you're talking about. It's, it's actually better for society that people think of themselves uh, as these deciding selves that are not determined in what they do, but you've never, you've, the point is you've never had large numbers of people who think of themselves as just straightforward physical cause and effect, every, every thought. Um, and so you might be okay. And Ben points out that, Hey, Alex, you very smart guy, you might be fine with that. He questions whether you could actually whether that would actually work in society. And I've been on the, I've been on the other extreme as in someone who did some really messed up stuff with it. So I'd be more suspicious of people absorbing these ideas. You know what I mean? On the other, on the other what? What? I've been on the other what? side in, in, in terms on, of- on the, people, on, the, on, yeah. on the other what? You just said something. On the other, what did you on just say? The, on uh, the other- uh, Other side of the spectrum, whatever you want to call no, it. No, 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 no. You just said on what the other extreme. See, there is a problem. Yeah, okay. Is no, that no, no. Is that extreme? like I, I'm not thinking of I'm not thinking of uh, Alex as an extremist or something like that. I'm saying there are two ways. No, no, you can no, look no. At it. no I, I, but, but but I'm saying you have been on the other extreme. Uh, that would be an extreme position to hold if you go on the you there's, know, there's basically that, there's basically two positions. AP, there is <laughs> Alex's position. Hey, look at me. I speak with a fancy British accent, and I'm a determinist, <laughs> and I live fine. Therefore, it works, which is the same dumb thing all these guys do. They all say, hey, it works fine for me. Works fine for me. Therefore, it'll work for everybody else. And I'm saying, actually, I've been one of the people who uh, believed the exact same thing you did and came to some very, very different conclusions about that. And uh, so, yeah, I'd be very suspicious of the idea that large numbers of people could absorb the idea that they're not morally responsible for the actions and it would be okay. Well, you're wrong. Well, we'll just have to look at the evidence. Oh, we're already seeing it all around us as people turn to atheism, the entire world goes insane. Isn't that a kawinky dink? It, not at all. Not at all. Hey, not at out. all. Yeah. Hey, we haven't seen this in a while. Knob twiddlers. Wait, what? I forgot about that. That's funny. Remember, that was one of the funniest things Richard Dawkins ever said. He's talking about the fine tuning <laughs> argument. He says, uh, <laughs> so the idea is he's a. Uh, uh, twiddling all these knobs and blah 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 to set up the universe, and so this divine knob twiddler. <laughs> we, I remember when we watched that; we both busted out laughing. Yeah, that's funny. That's good. Uh, here we go. AP. <laughs> AP broke his own brain. Still cries about it live. Atheist. D Wood. <laughs> brain was always broken. Never cried about it. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Draw your own conclusion. Nice. Nice. These just get better and better. Oh. Uh, here, she was nine years old. It says, biology drove me to shout. She was nine years. She was nine years old. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, fun. Curious fun. why Alex would even bother arguing his point, but I guess the Adams said he has to go to the studio and convince someone else 
that he also had no choice but to show up to the studio. So yeah, this is this is more in the uh, fatalistic uh, direction, the direction of fatalism. Okay, if you actually believe everything you're doing is determined, why you have intentions to go out and do all these things? But you you can keep in mind you can be a determinist and still believe that you have an impact on other people and so on. They hear it, and you know your your neurons are doing their things, and then. Uh, uh, you have an influence on them. And so you can actually influence society and still believe that you're completely determined. Yeah. Because look, you got AP here. He, tr he still tries to change the world, even though he believes he's totally determined. Because I'm not fatalistic. Does. Or have I'm you, just pretending I'm not fatalistic. Yeah. Have you seen the channel The Mahdi Has Arrived? No. And I hope I never do. That sounds fun. I want to see it. AP, have you seen the debate between Dr. James Tor and Professor Dave Farina, your favorite uh, ex-Twitter personality, uh, no. on abiogenesis? By the way, Jesus is the way. Really? Love you both. Yeah, I've heard about that debate. I've heard it was pretty much the opposite of this debate that we're watching right now. <laughs> I can imagine if Dave Farina is there. On abiogenesis, it was. Yeah, apparently they had it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. A bunch of people have, yeah, said uh, Dave Farina started uh, tossing around just insults and things like that. That's what he did to me on Twitter. <laughs> yep. You see what atheism leads to, ladies and gentlemen. But AC, oh, but I, AP, AP says, no, it doesn't matter what we believe. Okay, great. Then that, that, just... guy, that guy is insane. He started being, uh, he started becoming a, a hardcore Hamas defender and uh, basically saying, well, what do you expect if you put people in, a, in an open air prison? That's what they do. Like, you know, I, I even show him videos of hamas literally going and shooting civilians evidence of all kinds of messed up things and he's like yeah well what about that how about that? so what, what is what's so bad about this you know and and, and he's just insulting me the entire time well it sucks that he's doing that because language it would be what would be epic is if he had a debate with like a muhammad hijab type where it's just going to be an insult fest right he's got to set him yeah, up with yeah. the right you got to set him up with the right kind if he just wants to hurl insults and so on at people which it seems like that's what he wants uh yeah, he needs Very he needs strange individual. We need to introduce him to some of the Dawa guys. <laughs> Maybe on a, if there's any left that want to defend the scientific miracles of the Quran. <laughs> uh, here we I know, have, it, uh, it looks to me like uh, he's one of those atheists who would um, just side with the with, with the with the Islamist in a debate about science just to appease them. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yep, can't trust those guys. Here we have yeah. uh, Muhammad Hijab, Mojab. Use the promo code Mojab. I just want to speak with your wife for a second. Your husband is a coward. I'm the real man. <laughs> okay, you guys, got that? That's an actual quotation from Muhammad Hijab talking to Ben Shapiro's wife. Yeah, yeah. And so it comes up in this discussion on uh, Ben Shapiro. Um, hey, Drama Lama here. So <laughs> Drama Lama. Uh, says I'm late. Does AP believe in free will? I would I would free guess you, I, I would guess it depends. Uh, I would guess you believe in some kind of free will, but not uh, libertarian free will. Is that about right? Um, I would have to say I left it at. Um, it looks like everything is pretty much determined, and. I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. Uh, that's what I thought. Yeah. So that's your answer, Drama Lama. A non-answer. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to uh, everything day -to -day looks determined, level. and I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. Is. I get up in the morning and I make a decision whether I'm taking my kids to school today. I get up in the morning and I decide whether I'm giving charity today. I get up in the morning and I decide whether to go to a job today. Because the truth is that for, for a huge number of people, and I would say this is Art. true for virtually not virtually all, many, 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 I'd say the majority of people, if they were informed since the time they were small that their decision-making process does not exist, there is no decision to be made, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Those decisions have no moral weight in the universe because the universe has no moral weight. There is no way to create a functional society on the basis of these premises. There may be, there may be a platonic world where philosophers you know, can, can think about this in the gardens of their imagination and feel great about it, but that, that's not actually how society functions. Yeah, I was, th I was thinking about this, but debate. I'm looking at uh, the, t the actual topic is, is religion good or bad for society? So oh, okay. it is relevant to be bringing in just practical 
I'm not even saying what's true or not. It's just it's be- society is better if people think this way rather than that. Um, not for children, not for teenagers, not for adults. Yes. We're going to go on and talk about that in the second section. Um, I had free will to ask any of the questions I've had written down here, but I just didn't want to. I didn't want to stop either of you. It's been breathless and captivating. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, before Did you say it's been breathless? Yes. Go to our first break. We are going to go on and talk about society and how morality. You should have said breathtaking. Undergird society and civilization. May I just say, just, just, just I know we're coming to the end of the section. Uh, just to just to close off this 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 moment, that if people listening agree with me that free will in fact doesn't exist, and simultaneously agree with you that free will is somehow necessary for the upkeep of civilization, then I would simply ask them to consider who's relying on the delusion here. You know. Yeah. And, and I don't mean that I as know, an insult, I, but you I see know. what I'm saying. Good point. Good exactly. Point. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's, a bit, that's an important point to make here, but, uh, but they're, they're, and they're again, very there, nicely put. Yeah, there are, there are, again, hard determinists who believe, they're just, who believe that every last one of this is completely determined in everything we do, who believe that we are not morally responsible for what we do because we're programmed to do whatever we do, and who believe that nevertheless... It's good that people believe that they have free will and that they're morally responsible because that's better for society. So they could kind of agree with Alex that we're determined and they could agree with Ben that it's better that people don't know that. I I totally agree. And so for my argument, you would be. And from your argument, I would be. Yeah. Meaning I, I think that you, that you are delusional, there's no free will. And you think I'm delusional in the sense that that there is no free will, and yet I believe in it. Yeah. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. So for you, Alex, just before we go to the break then, because um, we're trying to... So they're both delusional from the I, other's I, perspective. I, I love this exchange. I think, I don't know, I just I just think both of these people are uh, fantastic people, treat each other so nicely, and are intellectually honest. And just that conclusion there is, is, is very wholesome. I and, but, uh, but I mean, think about it. I mean... <laughs> For lots of people, them, them's fighting words there, right? Like yeah, one guy, yeah. say, like one side is saying you're delusional, I'm not. The other side is saying no, you're delusional, I'm not. And they're both uh, totally uh, friendly and happy while they're having this discussion. Very pretty cool. good, pretty good. Take it down. Good. We've got two insane minds here, really kind of uh, grappling. And uh, I feel I as though I've won a prize one, and a competition. I think ben just makes to be one final parting um, shot to break it down for the viewers. Alex, would you say that free will is maybe if there is no such thing as free will, is it nevertheless a helpful fiction mm-hmm. for people, a convenient That's narrative a that we can cling to to sort of bat away despair? Precisely why it evolved, in yeah. my view. I, I, I think I totally understand mm-hmm. that. But, the, but because it evolved so strongly, uh, I will say that we are all, if we are sort of delusory in our belief in free will. I mean, uh, you're quite right in saying that I, I act as if free will exists in the sense of not constantly being aware that it doesn't. I don't wake up and do those strange morning affirmations that you mentioned into the mirror about, you know, the, the sort of heat maybe, death of maybe, the universe. But, maybe you but, should. <laughs> actually funny. Uh, so, but anyway, it sounds like he's acknowledged. It, so it, it's, it, Alex is going beyond saying, hey, this can be useful for society. He actually th- thinks that it's like adaptive and uh, actually played a, a role in, uh, in the development of the species. People, people. I think it is good to reflect on on your mortality in that manner every once in a while, and it, and it does inspire some some serious thought about whether you're really taking your philosophy seriously. But I will say that the the mechanism is so useful and has been so successful in embedding itself into our psyche that we cannot shake it off. So I can convince. I, I I can have conversations with people as I do regularly, talking about the existence of free will, and they come away saying, you know what, that's extraordinary. Maybe you're right about this, and. Nothing about the way they live their life changes, precisely because of the fact that the very argument I'm making relies on the assumption that we will still be driven by our drives. All I'm doing is identifying what's actually going on there, in my view. It doesn't actually change what happens or what the brain indeed does. So the the utility argument for what you're saying about free will is that the main utility in in you saying these things is for people not to believe you in the end. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Did, ever, did everyone catch that? And he's saying, so you're sitting here and saying, hey, I give all these arguments and so on, but people just go on about their lives, not taking it seriously at all. So Ben, <laughs> so ben says, so the, the main utility is just people not going to take this seriously, right? People aren't, you know, you, nice. you can argue this stuff because, you know, people, it's so ingrained in people that they are free, responsible agents 
that they're just not going to take you all that seriously. And that's why your views aren't dangerous. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right, guys. Well, that was everyone's introduction to the free will versus determinism argument. Uh, let's see here. Free will versus determinism or predestination and God's sovereignty. Yeah, just, just to be clear, we're talking about physical physical determinism here. There's, there's a theological version of these positions as well. Right. There's a theological yeah. position. So you can you can believe in God and believe that we are determined to do uh, everything that we do. And then you, yeah. work, you then you have to think about that and moral responsibility and so on as well. Yeah. How about no? <laughs> Let's see. Here you go, AP. How do atheists, that's you, justify their use of universals in their worldview if they themselves are soulless particulars? Depends on which atheist you ask and what they appeal to. Yeah, so in your face, Henry, <laughs> 2817. Uh, yeah, in your face. I didn't actually finish this discussion here, but Jeff Derbler says two points they got wrong in their debate, slavery in the Bible and Islam. I didn't know they talked about Islam. That's interesting. I was thinking we just cover the free will point because we haven't really gone into detail on that uh, at any point. So I was thinking that'd be cool, but I'm going to have to check it out if they started talking about Islam. You know, at, at some point, Alex was uh, making videos about, about Islam, criticizing Islam. Um, which he was he then, humiliated by Muhammad Ajab. Yeah, which he then which he then stopped doing because he said he just doesn't want to deal with it anymore. Because he got uh, he got he got some death threats and some. I, re I remember hijab the... hijab was saying it sounded to me like hijab was was threatening his, his safety, not in terms of a direct threat. He's like, yes, over there where you live, and blah blah blah. Be a shame, yeah. some Muslims ran into you over there, or something like that. Yeah, you yeah, remember yeah, that? yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was saying something like, uh, I, "I know you live in the Oxford something area, which is, by the way, one with uh, a very high Muslim population, uh, lots of Muslim Muslims around you, or something like that." It was just a very you know, like like a dog whistle approach. Um, speaking of Mohammed Hijab, that one moment there <clears throat> where Alex O'Connor... Uh, the O'Connor dynasty are an Irish noble dynasty. What the heck? The Alexa, dynasty. I didn't say Alexa, be quiet. Sorry, I thought I heard my name. Ale <laughs> Alexa! <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> Alexa, initiate self-destruct sequence. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? God, stupid Alexa. You were talking about anyway, Muhammad anyway. Hijab. You were talking about Muhammad Hijab uh, and something with, uh, oh, you were talking about uh, Alex starting with Islam and then getting out of it. And, and yeah, I was going to make, I was going to draw a comparison between Muhammad Hijab and, and, and these Dawah guys and, and, and these guys, but yeah. No, forget about it. I forgot. I forgot what else was. Yeah, this whole entire discussion would have gone very differently if one Dawa guy were involved in any capacity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Constantine here says, "How is Alex presupposing the laws of logic in his naturalistic determinist worldview that precludes metaphysics, the immaterial, and transcendentals?" Transcendentals. Yeah, he would. I don't know if he's ever explained that. Like, uh, so, so guys, uh, lots of times if people are arguing for the existence of God, they'll give like a cosmological argument, like the universe came into existence or something like that, or the fine tuning argument or biology or something like that. But then you have this other realm that's things like mathematics and um, uh, logical laws, moral laws. That it's in the realm of the conceptual. It's not. Stu it's not stuff you study with a microscope or a telescope or something like that. They, these things, they're they're, they're abstract. And so the question is, what is the what's the status of those things? But yeah, I'm not sure what. I, I don't know enough about Alex to say what he would think about those. Although we could ask him sometime. I chat with him sometimes. Oh yeah, is that your buddy? Yeah. 
Uh, David here says, I'm a little confused by determined. Does Alex also include me determining my actions? Because he says otherwise, it's all random. I mean, I can decide what I want to do. And that is me being free, right? It, it depends on what you mean, David. So, I mean, anyone would say, yes, you're deciding what to do right now. Um, the, the question is, is your decision determined by just physical processes and, and laws of nature? Uh, if so, then, then the question that arises is, what kind of free will do you have? You have some sort of, you have some sort of free will, but what kind do you have? And the question is, do you have the kind that is required for your actions, for you to be morally responsible for your actions? Um, so when, when we're talking about determined, it's not, it's not the same sense that Ben is talking about when he has this deciding self that he calls. It's you're determined by physical processes. And the processes that lead to your decision or your action are irrational. In other words, it's particles of motion. All this stuff was happening before you were born and just by straightforward physical necessity led to your thoughts and your beliefs. And you thinking that you're deciding this, even though the decision's kind of already been made for you in another sense. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, yes, Th there was this thing uh, which we both talked about right uh, bef before we went live even. Um, um, this whole <clears throat> this big series of researches which uh, found some really interesting and really creepy things about the human brain um, in terms of determinism, which, which is why they were concluding that, that it looks like that there is some real determinism in place, neurologically seen, mm -hmm. where, um, where, where, where they uh, monitor human actions and they find that before a person makes a certain decision and before that person is aware that they make that decision, the, 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 the decision is already made yeah. in their brains before they know it, Yeah, which is very messed up. Yeah, there's creepy, there's been creepy most people aren't familiar with this, but guys, there are creepy experiments that lead to very creepy, disturbing implications. So along the lines of what AP was talking about, there's one where they have you stare at a stare at a clock, like a like a sophisticated one, like right down to the second and so on. And they'll say, we want you to whatever it may be, tap your finger or something like that. And you just randomly decide when to tap your finger. And what they want is you look at the clock and memorize the exact second for when you decide you are consciously aware that you're deciding to tap your finger. And so you look and it's a 1203 and 59 seconds right now I decide. And so now they know exactly when you are aware of your decision, but they're also monitoring your brain and they find out that the, it started before you were even aware of it. Like you're, mm -hmm your neurons started firing even before you were consciously aware of it. And so that's, uh, yeah, that's some of the creepy stuff and there, like that. So cons consistently, consistently there is, um, like they fire, uh, sh like very, uh, a, a very short time before you make the decision. And, it, and, and, uh, you know, the findings are very consistent in that, which is why the conclusions were that, uh, that it looks like, humans um the human brain makes a decision for you before you are even aware of the decision so the question then is um is there something that subconsciously decides what you're going to do without you being even aware of it if that is the case do you have any freedom at all and or or, or what does that freedom actually mean i don't know complicated pretty creepy brandon says debates about free will are useless no they're not yes they are no they're not society yeah. will treat a person as having free will unless they show their brains are damaged beyond repair um no debates about philosophical topics are very interesting at the very at the very least at the very least they teach people how to analyze topics and assess evidence and so on most useless debates I've ever seen in my life. Brandon, your comments useless. You're not changing anyone's mind and society's not going to change at all. See how that feels? How's that feel, Brandon? 
Chuppy said it doesn't matter if it's good or not because there's nothing we can do about it if free will doesn't exist. It's also, the, so this is in the fatalism direction again, it's also useless to talk about what's good or bad for society if moral responsibility is meaningless. Um, you no, you can, I mean, you could still say, hey, even though I don't believe in real moral responsibility and so on, I still uh, would like to live a, you know, as nice a life as possible. And to get the, uh, you know, to get everything out of life I can. And therefore, yeah, the point is you don't, you don't have to be stuck with just fatalism. It's all pointless if you reject certain things. Although I lean in that direction because that's exactly what I thought. It's probably much more fun. Oh, no, nah. Schopenhauer died single and sad in your face. What? Hmm. Just burnt you up. You're like, no, he had this super happy life. Schopenhauer was the happiest. He, no, he, was, he had this happiest he life. He was super happy all the time. Joyful, cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely not happy. I'm, I'm aware of that. And um, But I thought he married at some point. I don't know. Have you ever watched Jay Dyer on Cosmic Skeptic? Do you mean Jay Dyer like just talking about Cosmic Skeptic or like on his show or something? What is that? I don't know what's being referred to here. I do not know. Here is a good Jewish apologetic search on a website. I'm not allowed to mention rational approach to Judaism. Let's see. Even as a theist, I recommend Alex's channel. He has great conversations. It's a good break from edgy atheists like Aaron Ra or AP. <laughs> well, anything's a good break from AP. <laughs> okay, I have, to, I have to correct myself. That is indeed true. I've been destroyed. Uh, Schopenhauer thought about marriage, but um, actually one of his uh, quotes is, um, marrying means to grasp blindfolded into a sack, hoping to find out an eel out of an assembly of snakes. <laughs> you heard it from AP, folks. That is typical of Schopenhauer. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's like a moho cult for Westerners. What is? What did I miss here? Everything. It says like a moho cult for Westerners. Everything is. Let's see. Hey, Ellie, Eli here. It's Ellie, but he knows that, El that Ellie sounds like a girl's name in, in America. So it goes by. Well, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. When he makes a super chat to you, he makes it $200. Yeah, for you, when it's $199. When he makes it to me, it's $199. One, yeah. What, what is this? <laughs> yeah, in your face. In your face, AP. <laughs> we all know who Eli really loves. Uh, he says, AP, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will get the extra penny. Love you both. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. There I see it. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Chuppy here says, the conclusion is childlike, simple, but naturalists must make it complicated in order to cope with the logical implications of all this. No offense. Yeah, and that's the thing. We went through all, we went through all their arguments. At the end of the day, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like in Ben Shapiro's position where I could recognize the problem with with physicalism. So naturalism, materialism, any, anything in that ballpark, I can recognize the problems that presents for me trusting my cognitive faculties and trusting my beliefs and so on. And yet I'm also in the position where I would say to cosmic skeptic, I do not understand how the soul works. I just I don't know. I can't I can't even explain to you how it would solve the problem apart from the fact that it wouldn't limit me to what you have available in your worldview. Let's see. Uh, Which just confirms Brandon's point from earlier. That no. It's a stupid debate. No. Confirms that atheism is stupid. Uh, <laughs> she was nine years old. Says, Inshallah, AP becomes a Calvinist. <laughs> Inshallah. So if you want to believe in determinism, AP, just become a Calvinist. Uh, no time, no see AP. What? No D time, no <laughs> Here you go. D. Wood's background, beautiful bookshelf filled with timeless wisdom. AP's background, nihilistic, ugly gradient full of nothing. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. How, how is this? <laughs> he said nihilistic, ugly <laughs> gradient. It's funny because it is a gradient. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Nihilistic, full of great, <laughs> nihilistic, ugly gradient full of nothing. Wow, 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 wow. 
Nice, and, uh, nice. Let's see. Two more here. Day two of asking for Dillamonkey versus Jay Dyer review. Hey, should we? Uh, yes. I've never checked that out. What did they debate? What was the debate on? I don't know. Dilla Hunty versus Jay. They had to check real quick. Hmm? They had a debate. Matt Dilla Hunty Jay Dyer. Debate on theism. Two hours and 45 minutes. Debate on theism. That's a long debate to actually sit here and go through. We'll see. Maybe there's a good section. Inshallah. Maybe. And of course, JP Moreland has good material on the soul slash free will. Yes. Yes. Everyone has yes. good stuff on that except for atheists. Yes. 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 Absolutely. All right. So, uh, what would you have to say about that uh, that debate so far? I think it's a uh, it's kind of a draw. Yeah, I think yeah, pre pretty pretty much pretty much so. <clears throat> I would score it that yeah, I would regard that as as so far on the free will issue. I would say that's pretty much as as even as people can uh, argue on that. All the that's other true. points, I'm sure that Ben absolutely crushed uh, Alex on. Which means you're wrong, but yeah, that's just where we are. All right, AP, any final thoughts before we head out? I would say um, that free will is interesting. Um, with that said, this was very interesting. And let's keep it interesting. Yeah, so uh, yeah, guys, it is an interesting topic. It's interesting, yeah. No, it's very, very interesting. And that's why, yeah. contrary to what other people have said, these things are very important topics, just to think through them. I mean, think. So you can, you can, as an atheist, accept the idea that the physical world is all that exists, but then you think about the implications of that view. And wait a minute. Every thought is determined by completely irrational particles in motion, obeying laws of nature. And every thought I have, every belief I have, I was determined to have. If it's a true belief, I was determined to have it. If it's a false belief, I was determined to have it. I think of myself as a rational agent, and yet it's all my reasoning is produced by irrational causes. So you can sit there and think that and then be you could be uh, you could be totally baffled by it. And so you think, aha. That's why we need the soul. That's why we need God to escape from this, this hellish physical world. And then Alex points out, wait a minute, how is, how is that soul actually helping you avoid the problem here? Think about that because your soul, yeah. is how it determined? That? Is it determined or is it random? Is it determined or random? What you need is some sort of third category, right? Where it's not determined, but not random. But then you, you know, if you actually wanted to, explain that then you've got your work cut out for you and that's what ben was saying I, I can't explain it i don't know how it works and so question is whether someone else can but a real a real chad he will just uh accept the reality as it is without needing to uh have a have a have a delusion and then just live life like a tough guy now look at the difference between uh my fans and your fans ap so we got my fans. So I, you know, I ask, hey, what's up with uh, Dyer and Dillahunty? Calm, mm -hmm. easy response. The Dyer Dillahunty debate was a precept debate. So, so I'm guessing uh, Dyer gave a uh, precept defense of theism. And then one of AP's fans, of course, comes over here, and it's just five dollars from Buster Hyman. <laughs> What? <laughs> These are the people who follow me over from AP's channel. What's wrong with you? That's what is that's bad. <laughs> Christoph Christophorus here says, How does everything come from nothing if only life comes from life? Yeah, another problem atheists can't solve. 
and uh, the Mahdi has risen channel. I, I would say lots of people oh, don't God. actually argue that nothing comes from nothing or, or something comes from nothing. It's actually a very unpopular view. So, the yeah, Mahdi it's a, has, it could be a straw man. The Mahdi has risen. The Mahdi has risen. I don't see such a channel. I don't see that. I see the Mahdi has appeared. I don't see such a channel, so check yourself before you wreck yeah, so yourself. Yeah, so everyone check yourself I, I before you appeared. wreck yourself. I see appeared, yeah. Oh, and we actually did. We actually appeared. did get a. We did get a comment from Buster Hyman. Oh, guy, nice. Please nice. review. Please review the Dyer versus Dillahunty debate. Yeah, I wouldn't mind checking that out. I don't know if it, again, it's a long debate. Maybe, uh, maybe if people want to want us to go through their opening statements or something like that, that's more manageable. The point is, it takes us like three hours to go through a twenty minute clip. So if it's going through someone's opening statement, we can do that. If it's us actually going through a three hour debate, it would take us like probably like ten hours. So that would have to be a really really interesting debate. Yeah. And let's see here. I am an atheist. Lol. You don't get to claim me, David. Oh. Hey, you see? no. You no, see? No, no, no. I wasn't talking about whether you're uh, atheist or, or Christian. I was talking about whether you have good manners. Now, generally, good manners are going to be more associated with, um, with being a Christian. But, <laughs> but the point is, you can't be an atheist look who's at, been look so... Look at the arrogance here. Look at the arrogance. The point here. is, you can be an atheist who's been so <laughs> radically influenced by hanging out with good Christians that you end up with good manners. And I'm just saying <laughs> have different people yeah. on different channels have different, uh, different manners. True. Uh, true. <laughs> and let's see. Khan says AP is a legend. Thank you guys for keeping us informed and entertained and finding yeah, what's Constantine the, what's the here. Source? What's the source for that? Hey, what's Constantine keep calling a uh, Matt Dillahunty Dilla monkey. What's up with that? Uh, uh -huh. Dylan Monkey was floundering at Philosophy 101 level questions and didn't even comprehend the is ought problem. Yeah, I've noticed that, that he has a problem with the is ought problem. To we be very honest, I do not think that it would be, um, you know, that it would be very, very, very wise for people who don't have these these arguments like every single day uh, to, have a, to have a debate with Jay Dyer on deep philosophical questions. Well, I mean, but yeah, but who's going to be who's going to be better than Matt Dillahunty? He's kind of like who's better than him? I don't know. People can be as far as general debate skills. Matt is a very, very, very skilled debater who's debated just tons and tons of people. Uh, that is as true. far as his knowledge and understanding of certain topics, yes, there could be people who know uh, certain topics or are familiar with certain topics better than him. Um, that, that is true. But, but with, with Jay Dyer, it's just um, like I disagree with a lot of stuff that he, he says, completely fundamentally different worldviews, uh, different explanations of things that are happening. But uh, I just think that the guy has a mind like a, I don't know, a monster or whatever it is. Very, very intelligent. Uh, let's see. Jack says, here is a boring super chat and username. Guess what channel I'm from? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, boring wouldn't tell us one channel or the other, but the fact that you're not uh, talking about perverted, disgusting things. Uh, means it's probably uh, my so channel. You're probably from here. Uh, yeah. give this to AP. He needs a haircut. What? I need a haircut. My hair is way longer than AP's. Yeah. Um, so he also, David also started copying me when I was like growing my hair longer. Suddenly I, I, I meet him and, uh, suddenly he has longer hair. Like what is happening? What do your entire life? You waited for, <laughs> for me to have longer hair. So you could, you could suddenly start experimenting with longer haircuts. Yeah. That's what happened. And not my wife telling me that she doesn't like my short hair. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Buster Hyman here says their part about the transcendental argument. Okay, so yeah, I will check out the Jay Dyer versus uh, Matt Dillahunty debate, and uh, apparently they have a section on the transcendental argument. If it's sufficiently if it's sufficiently short enough for us to review, I wouldn't mind doing that because I would like to see what Jay Dyer's actual case is, and I wouldn't mind seeing how Matt. Uh, responds. Uh, ben says, I, I have a friend who is a Christian and a materialist. He thinks free will is an emergent property. 
of our physical design. I'd have to see what, what, what he would mean by free will as an emergent property. Like what, what sort of free will is he actually talking about there? And, and a materialist, I'd have to like, I don't know what you mean by materialist because a materialist would generally be someone who believes in the material world is all that is, exists. And so if you're a Christian, you would believe in God in addition to that, unless you just believe like, as far as human beings are concerned, then we're just material. Yeah, I'd have to see what you mean. Uh, and please review the part where Alex mentions Islam. Oh, again, I haven't seen it. Okay, we'll have to see. If there's an interesting section, I will I will finish watching that uh, that discussion with Alex and Ben Shapiro and see what they say about Islam, and maybe we'll check that out. All right, everyone. We will be live again here someday. We don't know what, when that will be. It's going to be interesting. We're still getting comments here. Let's see. Constantine the Great. Dilla Monkey. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> His name's Dilla Hunty. Uh, Dilla Monkey. Oh, Dilla Monkey comes from Matt's Famous. I have value because my monkey ancestors had value. Also, Dyer is a heavy pre-sup apologist. Oh, okay. So he's using the transcendental argument. Okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. interesting. And... Have you read The Bondage of the Will by Martin Luther? Why would the will of man be the only thing that exists which is un, uh, un, unaffected by the curse of sin? Unaffected? Uh, that's, a different, that's a different sort of issue, Jonathan. Yeah, so we're in the realm of uh, basically physical determinism and so on. But yeah, have not read that. All right, everyone. We will catch you all next time. Again, should no video out tomorrow, video out tomorrow for uh, channel members. Tell me how you get access to it, because I can post the I can post that in the community thing, but I do not know how you actually get that. Uh, and then everyone else will be up Tuesday morning. Check it out, because it is, again, one of my favorite arguments against Islam in the most powerful form in which it has ever been presented. And... Learn the information. As always, share with your share it with your buddies. And as always, and no need for delusions. Just accept that there is no free will, and live your life. Yeah. See what the atheists encourage: blind faith. Yeah. Stay away from blind faith and atheism, ladies and gentlemen. Stay away from blind faith. <laughs>